What is up, everybody? I am Concerned Mom HS. Uh, I'm Danny Donuts. And I'm Sizzle466. And we are here with a Witchwood wild card review for you. Uh, all three high legend wild players. Uh, you can find us all on Twitch grinding regularly. Um, figured we'd uh, have a wild based card review for you here. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, first card here on the list is Witchwood Apple. It is a two mana druid card. Add three two two treants to your hand. What do we think about this? When I see this card, I think about Force of Nature. Um, they have Force of Nature, six mana, summon three two two treants. Um, when I look at this card, I'm thinking I'm, I'm paying two mana to have to play six mana's worth of mediocre minions. So. I yeah, the the triants are useful card. two twos for two for anyone who didn't yeah. know. Yeah, the triants costing two really uh, is, is the deal breaker for this card. If it costed mm -hmm. one, you could probably, I mean, they're really pushing hand druid with what druid's been given this expansion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, two mana seems like a bit much. Yeah, it seems like it'll be kind of a, a weak card even in the hand druid archetype if it does become one as they're trying to push it. So not not a lot to say about this card. It's it no. probably won't see play, but it's possible. Next card we have is Druid of the Scythe. It is a three mana, uh, four two with rush or two four taunt. It's one of the choose one cards. It's also a beast in either form. Uh, we, we should also mention the, the rush is a new mechanic to the expansion. So rush is very similar to charge, but you can only target minions. Correct. It's the old ice howl ability, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as wild well, no, goes, it's, it's a little bit better than Ice Hall because after the first attack, you can. Oh yeah, yeah, I apologize. Charge Devil Soar is uh, more an apt description of that ability. Um, mm -hmm. As far as Druid of the Scythe goes, Beast uh, Druid hasn't been a thing in Wild ever, uh, for the most part. So I doubt this. Like this is obviously the archetype this card would fit in, but I doubt it's going to find a home. Yeah, you're really trying to put this in a mid-range style Druid deck. There's a 4-2 for Rush. I mean, it's semi-comparable to a Corcoran Elite in some sort of like mid-range style deck because you're like trading with the board. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I'm not particularly a fan of it. It doesn't jump to any decks that I'm planning on building initially. Yeah, it seems a little weak for mm -hmm. Wild especially. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next card. That card probably won't see a ton of play. 4-2 uh, with Rush. And then... The, the the yes, these are the two forms of it for those who wanted to see that. And then there is a combined version for Fandral. All the, right, of course. Yeah, it looks... that. See, that that would be a great card right there if we could get that. Yeah, but, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, a little unreliable. So the next card we have here, uh, Ferocious Howl, is a three-mana Druid spell. You're going to draw a card and then gain one armor for each card in your hand. Now, the immediate comparison I, heal, I hear from a lot of people is Shield Block for this card. It's probably better than Shield Block because, I mean, as a Druid, how often do you have less than four cards in your hand? Which is very I mean, if you're playing like a Malagos or a Jade Druid or the Hand Druid archetype coming out, mm -hmm. um, I think most of the time this is going to be a better card than Shield Block. Yep. But you really can't leverage your armor, right? Like, one of the big things about Shield Block is you can use it with Shield Slam. Mm -hmm. That's why it's really good. In well, Druid, Druid, like, your armor is have... great, but... Yeah. They have, like, uh... They... It's weird that Druid gets all the cards that, like... Things like Savagery, and then they... they're still giving them armor spells. It seems like they can't decide which way they want to go with their, uh... Mediocre Druid spells. Is, is, is Fell Rage rotating out of, uh... Out of Standard? I guess it doesn't matter anyway. I'm just thinking... It, it, it feels like, would you rather run this or Fell Rage if you're th worrying about the armor? Because Fell Rage, you're going to get eight armor I think all four attack. If there were like a particular reason you needed the cycle off of the card is when you'd run this over Feral Rage, but that's the only situation I yeah. could see. This seems like a third branching path to me. Like, you'll take the armor option. It's like you're taking an armor option and then a card draw option. So. It's like a, a budget branching paths basically mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah, being, being an epic yeah well you just don't get as much as uh many options from this card mm -hmm. but uh yeah it could it could see play narrowly but i really doubt it especially in wild where you just have better options 
Uh, next card here, we've got a, a pretty interesting one, Witching Hour. It's a three-mana druid spell. Summon a random, friendly beast that died this game. Is Big Druid coming, boys? I, I actually like this card a lot. Like, I think about Resurrecting Priest, you know, Resurrect two mana, Resurrect Dominion. You're basically mm -hmm. paying one mana to narrow that scope down to just friendly beasts. Mm -hmm. I, think that's a, I think this could potentially be a very powerful card. Yeah, and we're going to see a, a 312 Taunt Beast with an interesting battle cry that actually is probably the best prospect for this later. But, I mean, there could be other interesting options as well. I can't yeah. think off the top of my head of any combo to be able to buy it. But... Right? What's that? Hadronox is, it? Hadronox is a beast? Ooh, Hadronox is a beast, oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm, that could be interesting, yeah. actually. See, like, I feel like I've seen fringe Hadronox control decks that just can't quite get there with the tools they have. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if we could... One of the issues with that is, like, spreading plague, because you're mm -hmm. always going to be running sp spreading plague in yeah. that deck, and then which... Adronox always brings back the one fives, which isn't powerful enough. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, it's similar to having a bunch of uh, Void Walkers die in cube with your ghoul down. Uh, it could be an interesting card, though. I hope I hope we see something cool with it, honestly. Yeah, it looks yeah, like, it's a really nice. nice design. Yeah, I, I like the design of it, like, spreading out the uh, effects like that to other classes. Uh, next we have Forest Guide. It is a 4 mana 1-6. At the end of your turn, both players are going to draw a card with this. Um, immediately I noticed that it is a, uh, a Moonkin, but not a Beast, which some people have pointed out is an inconsistency, considering uh, Moonkin oh, in the okay. past, some of them have been Beasts. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But probably um, not relevant for this card. Yeah. So, I mean, the only places you'd use this card is you could use it in a mill druid i guess or you could use it in an aggro druid but why would you use this in aggro druid when when you, we've got jeeves yeah jeeves yeah. is just strictly better mm -hmm. i uh i could see someone making a case for like if a very very heavy fatigue druid list comes into the field uh this card could possibly snag a slot just as another way to uh further your opponent's draw uh but it's still strictly worse than cold light oracle and a lot of the other options available Mm -hmm. Yeah, brand cold light is just so much more powerful. Absolutely, yeah. So probably, uh, probably a card that's going to be outclassed in every situation. But mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. We've got Bewitch Guardian next here. Uh, five mana Druid minion. Uh, four one taunt with a battle cry that is uh, exactly the same as Twilight Drake. Which so it's you Twilight Drake for each card plus in your hand. one mana for taunt, right? Correct. Seems pretty good to me. I mean, not even like a yeah. beast ability either. No, and they're really pushing this hand through it idea. Yeah, they yeah, really. Like hand, yeah. I wonder. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if the hand would be the same as like a Hadronox shell deck because this card also has taunt. But this card's pretty <laughs> bad coming back on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we come back as a four one. Mm hmm. So it could weaken Hadronox decks. Yeah. Um, yeah, feels bad. Uh, it, yeah, it probably it probably won't see play, but if the hand druid deck is a thing, possibly I suppose it's it's mm -hmm. something we'd have to wait and see on the archetype itself and if it fleshes out. Uh, next, we've got Whispering Woods, a four mana epic druid spell. Summon a one one wisp for each card in your hand. <laughs> is there... <laughs> Speed, speechless, wow. you guys. Wow. It's so good, uh, isn't it? I don't know how to stop this one. I, yeah. I think it's the exact opposite of that. Yeah, it's it's stunningly uh, stunningly bad. I think, honestly, it's yeah. it's an interesting uh, ability in Druid where you have all the buffs, but it doesn't want to go in that deck. So it's got some synergy with Crypt Lord. You know, you Crypt Lord, play a Crypt Lord, play Whispering Woods, Crazed Alchemist. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's a lot of effort for four extra damage. Exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> you're just not getting results out of this card ever. I feel like even in hand druid, like getting a four of one ones is not good enough most of the time. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just not going to do anything for anyone really. No, Probably I mean, not hand druid, see this card. Uh, hand druid, you're going to be wanting to play very big minions, not lots of tiny little minions. And yeah, especially in wild, effect. like all the options are just better for anything you'd want to do with this card. So, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a hard pass for everybody. There's the uh, the new wisp. That's and, our uh, third. That's yeah, our third artwork. Pretty for wisp now. pretty spooky. Let's see. Uh, next card, gloom stag. We've got a five-two druid minion. It's a beast. 
two six taunt for its base stats battle cry if your deck has only odd cost cards it's going to gain plus two plus two become a four eight i actually like if odd druid does become a reasonable thing i like this card a lot so with odd druid okay so you're, you're thinking about what cards you can't play so you're, you're losing wild growth mm -hmm. and you're losing your branching paths yeah. um, and, yeah, poison seed, and poison seeds, which is and pretty important seeds. in the in the current meta. Well, yeah. One thing, one thing about this card is if you make a direct comparison to Druid of the Claw, that uh, what is it? It's a four eight taunt. So and it doesn't have the versatility as opposed to a four six, and then it doesn't have the versatility for charge. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you're, I mean, you're going to be playing against a lot of decks with silence because of Q block and Paladin. Mm -hmm. So. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure if this card's better than Druid of the Claw. Yeah, and Druid of the Claw is obviously a card that's not seeing play in Wild or Standard for that matter. Yeah. So, yeah, even even if the Odd Druid is a deck, it almost is outclassed every time by Druid of the Claw. Unless you're just really hurting for that extra two uh, health on the minion for some reason. Uh -huh. But I, I don't think the card will see much play. No. Next card we've got here, Legendary Druid Minion, Duskfallen Aviana. This one, uh, on each player's turn, the first card played costs zero, and it is a 3-7 for five. If this is the first Legendary I open on Thursday, I'm going to be pretty unhappy. Mm -hmm. That's what i got to say about this one. I, there has never been a good card in Hearthstone where your opponent gets the advantage first. Yeah, that's a big problem, is giving your opponent advantage before you can take any, because then they're just probably going to run you over with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a brutal drawback, too. There's a reason people don't play Millhouse Manastorm for the extra yeah. stats. If, even, if, yeah. if you could somehow like play that card and then get a free spell with it, uh, it would be busted. But it counts itself, obviously, because it's the first card played each turn. So not being abusable could be rough. I could see down the line, if uh, we get more Void Caller type effects for other classes, if you could pop one of these into play without paying for it, uh, it could be abusable. Uh, until that's an option, though, it's a really bad card. There's a small niche application. If you're playing against aggro, like, turn five when you drop this, your opponent's most likely almost out of cards. And if they get a free card in for zero, like, they're, they're going to play their hand out anyway, right? Yeah. So if you're playing against aggro, like, this, this card will most likely survive if you have, like, a taunt up or something. So if we're in a really hyper aggro meta, this might actually be something you might maybe consider. It and could be some some, some very yeah. narrow tech card, maybe. Yeah, the, but it's so it's so narrow that you have to really go looking for it. It's not like a card where it's like instantly a good card. So mm -hmm. you right. really have to make it work. Yeah, it's really a build around me card if you it does work at all. It could also have some nice synergy with Loatheb if you play this in Loatheb on turn ten. It mm -hmm. could just help you set you up for that OTK the following turn with a mana reduction. Does Maybe. does, does Aviana override the Lothab effect, or if you play Lothab second, does it automatically make their spells cost five more? Um, well, our first card played. Uh, sorry, I thought it was for the first card played. Um, I believe it would override the Lothab effect. Yeah, I I was thinking it might. So yeah, either way, it, it could still be rough, even paired with a yeah, little yeah. But it's a, it's a real yeah. build-around me card. Maybe we could see something was in the future. Yeah. Uh, next card here, another Druid Legendary minion. Uh, Splinter Graft. It's an 8-8 eight, eight for 8. Battlecry, choose a friendly minion and add a 10-10 copy to your hand that costs 10. Very interesting card design. Uh, there's, a lot of combo, there's a lot of combo potential with this one. Yeah, there even are a lot even, of... Even though it is very slow. I think a lot of very meme combos with the card have been going around Reddit, um, but I'm excited to see if there is any actual application for the card, especially in Wild. In Standard, you probably won't see the card unless it's just like some weird tempo play for some druid that emerges. Uh, in Wild, mm -hmm. though, we get access to Aviana and Kuhn, oh, yeah. which means that we get to do crazy things with cards, especially like this, which duplicate a minion. Uh, I think, at worst, it's just another... A slightly different faceless in Aviana or in uh, Maligos Druid decks with the Aviana combo, 
because mm-hmm. I mean, with Aviana, it's going to cost one anyway, and so is the minion that you get off of it. So, if you really need to cast another minion for some reason uh, in the future, that could be an option in those type of decks. Mm-hmm. So I think eventually uh, I could... in an Aviana list, it could see play. Yeah, but I, I don't see it working in like a big druid list. Like you no, just no. want to run, you, you just want to run rag. Yeah, exactly. You just there are much better yeah. options for that much mana. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, that is going to be the last Druid card. So uh, the first Hunter card here is Hunting Mastiff. It is a good dog. It is two two, uh, or sorry, a two one for two mana with Echo and Rush. Echo, another new ability. Uh, you may cast this card as many times as you want in the turn you play it. Uh, sort of like a, an unstable evolution effect, and uh, it's it's an interesting effect along with the Rush, of course. Uh, this card could be okay. I think honestly, I, I look at this card and I I don't think of it more of as a minion. I think of it more of as, as AOE for Hunter. Yeah, Just, yeah. It's, yeah, I, it's it, almost like a different version of uh, Unleash the Hounds for Hunter, mm-hmm. but much if, more expensive to get value out of. But it's if, a more if, flexible. Yeah. What is it? Forbidden Flame for Mage. Mm-hmm. So it's like you can go in just a little bit more flexible. Yeah, yeah. And with and with Leoc, it's pretty insane. With Leoc, you, you basically you're playing um, mm-hmm. fast bolts on minions. Not yeah, really fast bolts, yeah. but running torches on minions without getting the free cards. But mm-hmm. I think it's a pretty decent card. Yeah, I think it could be okay, especially if we see some sort of like face or like at least aggro ish hunter deck. It's a beast, I'm obviously. So I'm excited to see this off of Deathstalker Rexar. Oh That's yeah. That's gonna be really yeah. cool. This will be a really good yeah. card to get out of those. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, and for those of you who weren't aware, um, Blizzard has updated DK Rexar to not just include the beast from this set, but also from Cobalt and Catacombs. Finally. So DK Rexar is getting a big buff. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we see more of that card for sure. But yeah, this this is an interesting one. It could see play for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, next card, we've got Dire Frenzy, another very interesting design. Uh, so it's a four mana hunter spell. We're going to give a beast plus three plus three and shuffle three copies of it into your deck with plus three plus three. Um, a lot of abusable design space with this card, I feel like. Mm-hmm. My only concern with this card, and I haven't l- looked at all the new Hunter cards too carefully, but card draw has always been an issue with Hunter. So you are diluting your deck, maybe with minions. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I'm, I'm, you, if you're going to play this in a Control Hunter deck, you need to have some sort of way to draw cards, whether yeah. it's a Cult Master even. I uh, I haven't looked through the list of beasts lately to check out like what are actually the best targets for this card, but I think it could be. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily say it's gonna be good, but I think it could be a very interesting card. Yeah, I think you could take this card two ways as a build around. You could go and like make a, a menagerie type of hunter because they have some of the dragon synergies that are coming up. So you could go and run Curator and like add your Drake and stuff like that. So you can add in additional draw into your deck, or you could go and go to the like quest hunter route. Whereas like this on like Stone Tusk Four is really good, and then you have well, I don't even know something Tolbier or something. I don't know the name of the card, but it's like the four mana draw two one drops from your deck. Mm-hmm. So you put a bunch of Stone Tusk Fours that are oh. or that are four fours, and then you draw those. So those are the two ways that I would, I'm initially going to try to tackle using this card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Yeah, it's it's just an ability that brings a lot of interesting options to the table. Could also give Quest Hunter a bit of a buff, which it yeah. definitely which needs. It needs it, it, yeah. It doesn't, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't have any power, but in, mm-hmm. in Quest Hunter, this could be really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's, uh, once again, yeah, very interesting design. I will, we'll see if it actually makes an impact anywhere. Uh, next card we have Vile Brood Skitterer. It's a uh, five mana one three beast with poisonous and rush. I don't feel like this card is powerful enough stat line wise. Again, I, th- I think of this more of a, as a spell. Like mm-hmm. I think about Deadly Shot, three mana destroy a random minion. Um, not considering taunt, this is basically a five mana destroy a minion of your choice. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. W- within yeah. Uh, some boundaries like taunt and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I not a ton to say about this card. It's it's a very basic card. We could we could see his oh. removal spell somewhere, maybe in arena most likely, but I don't think it's gonna make an impact on Wild at all, obviously. The stat the stat line is is terrible. Yeah, stat line is horrible, which I mean yeah, it has to be for a, a rush uh, uh poisonous minion. So we have Duskhaven Hunter in uh, both of his halves. Uh apparently the artwork changes too. I didn't realize that. It's interesting. Uh, it's one of those, each turn this is in your hand, swap his attack and health cards. This is a very interesting sort of cycle of cards coming out with this set. Uh, this one in particular is, I feel like, only powerful as a 5-2 stealth for 3. That being said, that could be a powerful enough stat line to see play in some sort of face hunter deck if it were to emerge. Yeah, in Odd Hunter and Baku Hunter, you might see this. There's, uh, the issue with uh, that is that there's so many good 3 drops in Hunter. Mm -hmm. Hunter's three drop spot has so many good cards. Well, I mean, I feel like that in itself would be almost more of a, an incentive to play like a face odd druid list. Or not druid, I'm sorry, face odd hunter list. We also have the issue here where we don't have the beast tag. So that also. Yeah, that's the card very quite interesting. A bit. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like in like a face hunter list, it wouldn't matter as much, but it is still important for like kill command and whatnot. Mm hmm. So it, this card could see playing a face hunter, but I doubt it sees playing it elsewhere, especially without the beast tag. When it comes to your hand, when you first draw the card, is it a two five? Uh, yes. Yes. That's my understanding. So you play. Oh, and it's, so what? So if you have the card on, if you draw it turn three, as a face hunter, you wouldn't really want to play it until turn four. Yeah, that's, that's another really drawback weird. to the card yeah. too. So mm. yeah, that's if you draw it on three. But hmm. next card, we've got a Hunter's Spell. Uh, four mana, Wing Blast. We're going to deal four damage to a minion, and if a minion died this turn, the spell costs one instead. Uh, I think it could be a viable tool for a Spell Hunter list. I think this card's good enough to fit in anything that's not a Face Hunter. This is like Siphon Soul. Like, uh, it's it's Hunter's version of Siphon Soul. Or not Siphon Soul, um, Soul Fire. Soul Fire, yeah. Soul Fire, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you're not discarding a card, but you, most of the time, you're Hunter, you're ahead on the board, so you're going to be able to trade something away. Yeah, do you think only being able to damage minions does... Uh, I mean, obviously it would be uh, too powerful if it could damage uh, players and minions at that cost, but being yeah. that it is only a minion damaging spell, do you think that is a little uh, underwhelming in Hunter? I mean, you always want to go face in Hunter, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a good. I think it's it's a good card in like a mid range list just to help you push that extra tempo. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can fall behind a little bit against an aggressive deck. So mm -hmm. I I think it's a pretty decent card. Okay. I see, I could see I I could see it difficult to ever play this before because there's a you always have a weapon or something on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it it'll probably see some play in some hunter list somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can catch it around ladder. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, next card we have is Carrion Drake. It is a 5 mana 3 7 dragon hunter minion. And it's Battle Cry. If a minion died this turn, gain poisonous. Which is a very interesting ability to see on like a 3 7 dragon. That's, yeah, that's a pretty devastating stat line to have poisonous. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that being said, Hunter doesn't have the most uh, like dragon support to abuse the uh, tag of the minion. And also, it feels a little slow uh, in even like mid range hunters, especially because it's not a beast. So I mean, it I doesn't it doesn't get hit by Houndmaster, and it doesn't help kill commands at all. But it I don't know, it could be playable in a mid range sort of hunter if they want that sort of effect, I guess. Because a lot of the time in mid range hunter. Like the hunter doesn't have the greatest five mana cards, so a lot of the time you're playing a three mana card and doing a hero power. Mm -hmm. um, so in the right meta, I think this card could work. I mean, I don't think it's a particularly good card against an aggro deck, but definitely against a mid range or control deck, it's got a lot of potential. Okay. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what dragons you want to run in a deck that's like a hunter deck like you're, you're gonna instantly put in like twilight guardian and maybe azure drake and stuff like that mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know there's so there's so many um well, we're gonna get to a card later that'll be really interesting but um there aren't really that many cheap dragons 
So, and Hunter yeah, doesn't point. really have as many things that you want to do for uh, for high drop. You don't really want to have like Anixia and Alex Straza in a Hunter list. Mm -hmm. So it seems kind of counterintuitive to have this druid in a or this dragon in a Hunter deck, uh, but we'll we'll see. If it works well, then out. you might actually not even put it in your deck because um, you've got Nether Spike Historian. Where you can discover dragons. Yeah, and exactly. You get yeah. A high, you get a high, it's, a high, yeah. it's a higher drop rate because it's a class card. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's where we'll see it. Might more. not even be necessary, yeah. yeah. So the next card we've got here is a Hunter Secret. Two mana, uh, Rat Trap. Uh, after your opponent plays three cards in a turn, summon a 6-6 six, six Rat. I don't think we're going to see this one everywhere. I think this might be a hundred dust. Yeah, I I don't see a lot of decks casting three spells consistently every turn. Well, no, not necessarily spells, just just cards. Or cards, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't I don't see most people casting three cards in a turn a lot of the time, unless you're playing against mm -hmm. like some sort of very aggressive deck. Uh, most decks mm -hmm. can't afford to play three spells in a turn or three cards yeah. in a turn. Well, so, I mean, sometimes you have to if you're trying to clear a really wide board. But at that point, it's late game, and then the six six isn't really that big of a deal. You can probably, you can probably deal with that six six with relative ease. It just seems like, like any time yeah. your opponent's actually triggering this card, it's too late and it's very weak. So I, I'd be interested to see a spell hunter or like a secret hunter list with this card, but I don't think it will make the cut usually. Hunter secrets what, 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 are just better usually. What does the art look like for this rat? The into uh, the into a six six rat looks like mm, doom rat. rat. Oh, wow. it's a doom yeah, rat, rat, everybody. Yeah. Oh wow, that, that's, that's a, a big rat. rat. Man, it that's looks a like a plague rat, rat of some sort. So that was a six six. Hey, at least it costs six if it gets uh, bounced or anything like that too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, next card here, we've got Toxmonger. It is a hunter epic, four mana for a two four minion. Whenever you play a one cost minion, give it poisonous. Is this the card that's going to save Quest Hunter, boys? It's interesting they use the words whenever, as if it gets poisonous multiple times, because you only have to get poisonous once. Yeah, it doesn't do anything beyond the first time, so it's you think curious it if they make when. a trigger. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's when you play a minion, not when you summon it. So, like, the second cat. Oh, like that, yeah, it's only it. off plays. That's a good point. I think the card seems a little weak. Um, a four mana two four that does nothing on the board and yeah. isn't a beast. Well, I don't like, feel a, like the abilities a even. Poisonous though is pretty good. If I mean, you have like fiery bat, which goes and the one damage will go and kill a minion. Swim plus four, getting this is really good. So if I mean, they're, they're start, it shows that they're really trying to get quest hunter a little bit more viable and give it some tools. But one of the issues with Quest Hunter is just draw. Typically, you're not going to be able to finish your quest. Don't you almost so need to, in that deck? Don't you almost need to have the quest done by the time you would be playing this card with a minion? It's, Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like that's that's a big problem. It's a little slow for that kind of deck. Maybe if it mm -hmm. was like a uh, a one one for two with that ability, that'd be very interesting. Mm -hmm. But I think at this stat line and cost, it's going to be a little underwhelming in any deck. So we'll see. But mm -hmm. probably probably won't see it around. Uh, Houndmaster Shaw is our next uh, oh. card. It's a yeah hunter legendary, uh, four mana, three six, and your other minions have rush. Oh, a man. very this, uh, this has some potential. Yeah, I feel like it's an abusable ability. We'll just have to see if it can actually find a good hunter deck to uh, call a home. This this in a. In a more slower hunter, with mm -hmm. the previous card, the combo is quite well because now you're giving it rush and poisonous. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, but that's a lot of mana. That's like yeah, nine, nine mana, nine <laughs> mana for a rush poisonous one drop. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure Any about that. Any minion that summons commitment. tokens is really good with this. Something like haunted creeper, where mm -hmm. you just your tokens instantly get rush as well. So yeah, that's this very is a really usable. good comeback mechanic. There's also the, um, there's a, a, I think it's a neutral card coming up that has a death rattle that splits into two guys with death Splinter rattles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, splits into so even we'll more death, death rattles. So. Mm -hmm. That does cost eight, though. Yeah, that, that, is, that is an issue. 
So we'll uh, we'll see. I could see this card in some sort of mid range hunter list. We we might see it around, but uh, mm-hmm. that'll be interesting. Uh, next card we have here is Amorous, a uh, another dragon for hunter. Uh, it is a legendary ten mana for an eight eight dragon. Uh, Battle cry double the attack and health of all minions in your hand. Wow. Do you guys Just know where you're, wow. you're gonna see the most of this? What's that? Do you know where you're gonna see the most of this card? Where, where's that? Off of spiteful summoner. Yeah. There's the 10 drop. Oh yeah, because in standard, I yeah. believe there's gonna be five ten drops in the format after rotation. So we'll see this card a lot off of spiteful summoners. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna call it right now. I think this card is not good. Um, yeah, in wild the cards, as a, the cards well, I, mean, I feel like not useful at all. Well, I mean, as a hunter on turn ten, you play this card. How many cards are you really gonna have in your hand on yeah, turn ten? Yeah, exactly. To have such a big impact, like that. That ability needs uh, to be on a five drop. <laughs> but like that would be OP probably if it was like in like an eight drop one one. I could, that would be very interesting. Uh, just I don't the, know. What, 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 what's the dragon cheaper? priest use this card? The dragon priest will use this card. Oh yeah. And we'll be sad. Yeah, they'll figure <laughs> out a way to take it somehow. <laughs> oh man, it'll be brutal. But yeah, not a lot to say about this card. It's pretty bad. I feel like uh, it enables mm-hmm. Mimi combos, and that's about it. Yeah. So uh, that was our last hunter card. We are moving on to mage now. We've got a two mana mage spell here. Snap freeze. Uh, freeze a minion. If it's already frozen, destroy it. Uh, Shatter's bigger brother's here, and he's not happy. <laughs> yeah, this is what Shatter should have been. Yeah, exactly. It's, mm-hmm. it's. Uh, I still don't think it'll see like a widespread play, especially in Wild. Um, it is nice that it is a little more flexible than Shatter because that card is just, just not good. So, uh, yeah. this, this is a consideration good. off of Glyph. When you get a glyph, you're typically going to be running a frostbolt in whatever deck you're running glyph. So mm-hmm. this is like a. So that's the only time I really. I mean, I mean I'm not putting this in my deck at any point. Yeah. Like. It could be a good glyph target, better than shatter at least, right? Yeah. 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 Also, shadow, shadow, is shadow, is shadow a potion. Was shadow a potion, or was that that was not the time? Right? Yeah. That was the no. That was the zero mana potion of freezing potion. Freezing so, no, potion. Okay. Yeah. So that was the combo you needed to have before. So. Mm-hmm. Well, now yeah. we have it all in one card. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Blizzard. Yeah. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Next spell, card, uh, black cat. It is a three mana mage minion, three three beast. If the beast tag matters here. Uh, spell damage plus one, and uh, if it's the only, or sorry, if your deck only has odd cost cards, you get to draw a card, and this comes into play. Uh, which is very interesting. Um, if odd mage does become a thing, this is an auto include probably. Yeah, this is uh, like better than Azure Drake in that type of deck. Yeah, if uh, if odd mage does not become a thing, then this is just a reskinned uh, suit spewer as a beast instead of a mech. That is true. So, uh, yep, yeah, it'll it'll see play in an odd in odd mage, but we'll see if that's an actual. Oh yeah, player. there's no way you wouldn't play this in odd mage. Oh yeah, it's an absolute it's, it's auto include in that deck. Yeah, very good card yeah. if you can trigger the ability. Uh, next we have Vex Crow, uh, four mana, another beast for mage. We're getting that archetype going. <laughs> All right, we even get a draw spell. We'll see later to go with these new beasts in mage. But uh, right here we've got a four mana two th- or sorry three three beast. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, summon a random two-cost minion. Um, yikes! Not uh, not Silent seeing this. Better. Yeah. yeah, it it I... seems very understated for a card that doesn't have a great ability. Um, if you go off with it, you can make a board of two twos or not a two two. Sorry, two drops. But I mean, how good is that really? It seems, what is it, Violet Teacher is the other card mm-hmm. that you can compare this to, and yep. Violet Teacher is not even considered to be run in exactly, some of these yeah. decks, so... Violet Teacher yeah. also more resilient to removal. So Yeah, but I mean, two drops are better than one one. So yeah, so there's the, the trade-off. Two drops are typically pretty strong. Also, Violet Teacher's not a beast, so... <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I feel, like Drew, I feel like Druid wants this card more, because they loved Violet Teacher back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and because it's a beast, too. But poor Druid. There are going to be some amazing clips from this card, though. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I can't X, wait. X Crow into explosive sheet. I was gonna say, X what do you Crow mean? Into, yeah. What do you mean amazing clips? It's all gonna be doomsayers, all, all no, the way down. No, that's gonna be the amazing clip. The doomsayer. yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. We'll be we'll be tired mm -hmm. of them after a week. <laughs> Next we have Cinder Storm. It is a three mana mage spell. Uh, deal five damage randomly split among all enemies. It's like a spreading darkness, but for mage, and you can't hit yourself. Uh, so more like uh, what's the power? Arcane missiles. It's arcane missiles. This is arcane missiles on steroids. Sure, yeah, that too. I was thinking avenging okay. wrath. But I mean, okay, so th 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 arcane missiles is one mana. So basically, you're paying an extra two mana for mm -hmm. a flame waker effect. On top well, I'd of rather just play missiles. a flame waker. I think I would too. Yeah. And the big thing with that is you normally play arcane missiles when you have uh, it costs zero because of the apprentice. So, yeah, you can't really leverage that as much here. Yeah, I don't think for three mana the spell's doing it. Maybe, I, at two mana it might have been too good, but I don't think at three mana it's going to do much for mage, especially in wild. Their options are just so good in comparison. It's going to make some paladins pretty sad off glyph, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mage yeah. getting all the perfect glyph targets this set. That's all they wanted is just yeah. glyph targets. <laughs> That's what this set for mage is. Uh, next we have Bonfire Elemental. Going back to pushing Elemental Mage some more. 5-5 mm. uh, five, five Elemental for 5 mana. And if you played an Elemental last turn, draw a card. Pretty basic. Uh, nice stats, obviously. 5-5 five, five for 5. And not nice, but reasonable at least. We've seen better. But Even if even if I was running an Elemental Mage, I would still choose Asia Draco for this card. Yeah. What do you guys, I probably you guys think about yeah. Unless you are like really hard up for more elemental plays to like pair with the other elemental cards, I think this card's probably getting passed over in that deck as well, just for Azure Drake and whatnot. Considering mm -hmm. we still have in wild, so Yeah. Yep. Let's see. It's Next good off we... of that four the five mana four five though. The nice. elemental that summons other elementals. That's yeah, what a lot of yeah. these spells are. A lot of the stuff this yeah. Is, yeah, it'll be good when you get it off of a random effect. But. Yeah, mage, mage is getting more random effects to uh, benefit from. They noticed that all the random spells were a little weak, so Blizzard's trying to help them out. Uh, next card here, we have a 5-5 five, five mage minion, or sorry, a 4-4 four, four mage minion for 5. Uh, whenever you draw a card, gain plus 1, plus 1. Interesting. Uh, feels a little weak, though. I, I can I can see the synergy with Alaneth, um, where you you play this on five, five mana four four isn't absolutely terrible. It's not great though, but I mean if you follow up with the Alaneth and this thing lives, you got a seven seven and a ten ten. Yeah, um, in wild I feel like the problem is going to be finding a place to actually play this minion and have it stick because that seems very unlikely. Mm -hmm. But if you uh, already have a Lunith out, right, and then you play this, it's a 5 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. That's so true. It, that's it's true. hard to remove a 7-7 seven, seven just Is a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven good enough for Mage if you already have a Lunith down? Or you, would you not. rather just kill them? trying to burn everything out at that point. Mm -hmm. it, it, seems like, gonna... it seems like a win more card, and playing it probably actually stops you from winning faster in a Lunath Dex, because, like, whenever this card would be good is when you're already going to win the game. It's not helping anybody come back from a spot. Yeah, I mean, why, why would you play this with a Lunath up when you could just play a um, Kirin Tall Mage and a whole pile of secret, and then you're secret ladies, and off you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just anything would probably be better than this card mid-range-wise. Uh, next card, probably the card I'm most personally excited for in this set. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, Book of Spectres. It's a two mana mage spell. Uh, you're gonna draw three cards for two mana and then discard any spells drawn. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good card. I mech think we'll see it. Back. Yeah, 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 mech, mech mage. I miss. I mech miss mage? mech mage. Wait, what a Lunath and Mech Mage? Oh, I've, I've, I've tried. I've played, just... Fel, I've played Fel Reavers and a Lunath in the same list, so we're we're ready to try this card out. Yeah. I've had uh, a lot of chat. bad if you discard a spell, right? Like, exactly, you yeah. Two, good. Yeah, like it's an arcane... Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Um, the Shaman spell. Um, the ancestral Knowledge. Yeah, Ancestral Knowledge, that's it. It's It could just be an Ancestral Knowledge without a drawback, even. 
Um, I've, ha I've, had a I've heard a lot of chatter around the water cooler about um, <laughs> Naga Giant's Mage. Yeah, I think card. that is the most brewed <laughs> no. deck with this card so far. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see some Naga Sea Witch with Book of Specters, boys. There's no avoiding that one. Um, yeah, I I can't wait to abuse this card honestly, especially with uh, the Mage Legendary we're gonna see coming up soon. I think it's even uh, better. Uh, yeah, this this card's insane. Yeah, I yeah. I can't wait to can't wait to play around with it. I'm excited. Yeah. This might be the best card of the set. Oh yeah, yeah, it's my favorite by far. Uh, next we have another epic here. Uh, four mana for a two two. Uh, battle cry discover a secret and put it onto the battlefield I don't think this card is going to do anything for wild at all the problem with wild is that there are so many bad mage secrets in the pool mm -hmm. and a format of 2-2 is so terrible also in wild yeah. by the time you're approaching 4 and 5 mana you need to do really powerful things and this card is just the only time terrible I stat line, terrible, not terrible, but very mediocre ability. The only time I think this is good is when you discover an ice block off of it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only time I can say, I mean, is this worth running in like a Reno Mage list so that you can get an ice block? A second ice block. Of the time? Yeah, maybe the 30% of the time. I, I, mean, feel like, I feel like it's just strictly worse than playing whatever seeker you're trying to play. Because it's a 2-2 two, two for 4. Yeah, I mean... So, the, the only applicable situation one, yeah. would be in, like, a Reno situation where you can only play one of those secrets. Mm -hmm. Or, like, a third ice I mean, block in some other decks, maybe. Yeah. But that seems a little narrow for the card still, too, because you're not getting... A, you're not even close to getting a guaranteed secret, so... That you need. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason Keeper of the Grove doesn't see play now. I mean, Keeper of the Grove still has an amazing effect, but the mm -hmm. stat lines is just awful. Two twos for 4 are just not yeah. doing enough mm -hmm. in this game. Uh, so uh, we'll move on from that card. Now this is another mage card I'm extremely excited for. This is a card I was saying would pair pair very well with Book of Specters. Uh, it is a two mana, two two mage legendary minion, Archmage Arugal. Uh, whenever you draw a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. This terrifies now, me. Yeah, this is another <laughs> card that would be just disgusting in uh, conjunction with Book of Specters and some sort of mage giant deck. Think about four mana, play Archmage, play Book of Spectres. Say you hit two Giants. That's four Giants now. You already have the Sea Witch. Turn five, you're playing the Sea Witch. You're playing your four Giants, and your opponent's just super sad about it. Thanks, Archmage. Really appreciate it. Like, what What other, like, I feel like there's so many cool things you can do with this card, even in other decks. Like Yeah, and, and like Reno Mage, this gets mm -hmm. you a, another Reno. Um, I mean, obviously, you're playing Book of Spectres in that deck, too. So, mm -hmm. um an extra Kasakis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just, I, I, you're seeing so I, many I, good uh, copies off of this yeah. card usually. Um, I I even want to see this in some sort of like abused and maybe some sort of like Exodia list if possible. Uh, if you could some see that it's a lot harder to do there, but if you could just somehow make more combo pieces for a particular deck with this, like maybe in the quest giants list, this could be used to make more giants. Yeah. Uh, but it's very narrow I, there as well. So I, we'll see. Just a lot I, of I uses for this very powerful effect. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to use this card in conjunction with was it was a Book of Spectres, the previous yeah. card, um, in a spell based deck. Like I don't, I don't, in Real Mage, I don't think it will be as good because you're so reliant on those spells for board clears. Mm -hmm. But I think the combo of this and Book of Spectres is going to be much more better in like a rush, like an aggro um, smackdown mage. Sure. Yeah, well, I feel like in the sea, um, like it's going to be best in the sea witch list yeah. with like Archmage yeah. and the book yeah. of specters. Because yeah. then you're just going to get specters pure value. might just be good enough to run in Reno Mage with this. Like, the, I think that that card's that broken. Yeah, say say you burn one spell, but you draw two good minions. If you can get a copy of both of those minions, like I feel like Archmage Book of Specters is going to be a combo that any mage deck thinks about yeah. for the near future. I mean, besides like maybe like a freeze mage deck, but. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. There's, there's also an interesting synergy with this and another neutral that was printed that draws your lowest costing car, uh, mm. minion. Yeah. So if you play this and then like in some sort of Exodia list and your lowest card is the Apprentice, mm -hmm. you just instantly get two of them. So Yeah, would... so for your two Apprentice package, you could just run Archmage, 
the tutor guy and the sorcerer's apprentice but then at the same time that becomes less consistent because you can just draw random pieces of it in the wrong order and whatnot sure but, I mean, but it this, is this also yeah. builds on consistency too where it's yeah. like you run the normal stuff as well and then you just add this right right yeah it, there's so many so many cool things you can do with this effect i'm excited to play with that for sure mm -hmm. very excited uh next we have uh a slightly <laughs> less exciting uh mage legendary it's a five mana mage, <laughs> or sorry uh a five five for six uh battle cry add a random legendary minion from the past to your hand so for us wild players uh, we should just know that we're going to get wild-only minions from this, so like minions you're used to seeing, but you're not going to get any newer legendaries from it. That being said, this card should see about as much play as like Gelbin and whatnot. It's a, it's a fun six-mana legendary that does nothing really for people. Yeah. It's it's the only time, like, if you're doing some ridiculous value type thing, but I mean in wild there's no need to do that because you're really just trying to kill your opponent. Where it, there are sometimes in standard where you don't have enough, um, you can just play a value game in mage and just like burn them out with like big mage, but that's mm -hmm. not even it's not good enough for a wild. I can't wait to get some chargeless patches off this card if I ever choose to play it. It's great in casino exciting. mage, which is not a viable deck, but a lot of fun to play. Yeah, so this is the new all star legendary casino mage. That's absolutely true. Forgot about that one. Uh, may your Ragnaros uh, be huge. That's all I can say about this card. <laughs> uh, so that's it for mage cards. Next, we've got immediately a in very interesting paladin spell, uh, Rebuke. Now, it's a Lothab effect on a two-mana spell. Uh, enemy spells are costing five more for your opponent next turn. I've seen a lot of hype around this card. I'm not sure it'll be game-breaking. I don't think it'll see common play by any means. But I do think it's a, a tech card against a lot of decks. Yeah. I could see like maybe some like down the line some sort of aggro list running this as a tech card against some combo like spell heavy combo deck later in the future or something like that because it just gives you an extra turn to not get killed. Yeah, the thing with aggro paladin is like lower third the body is so good for its value. Mm -hmm. Like the five mana five five body is so good, and a lot of the time. You play your lower third by five, and your opponent's dead on six, mm -hmm. mainly because of that lower third body. Um, rebuke, although I think rebuke is a good card, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't use it as a replacement to lower third, but maybe as an addition. Yeah, in mm -hmm. conjunction with lower third, it's yeah, uh, yeah. That's it's... the consideration that you should be doing in a mm -hmm. deck that's already running lower third. Is rebuke is rebuke good enough to? Add. Justify a slot, yeah, for yeah. like a second loath of like ability. Like I said, I think it could be a narrow tech card down the line. Uh, yeah. We'll see. I about think it's it, a, it's a one, you're never running two of these because you're already running loath of. This would yeah. be a one of, if anything. Mm -hmm. They're playing two on one ten would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Lock your lock your opponent out from clearing it's your it's, board. It's I've always loved format. playing Bran loath of. Like that's one of my favorite brand plays still to this day. <laughs> So, I, uh, we'll see double rebukes in the future, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Next card, we've got uh, Sound the Bells. Now, I know people have been back and forth on this card. It's a two-mana spell with Echo. Uh, give a minion plus one, plus two. I've seen a lot of people say this card's trash, etc. Uh, and I've seen uh, a couple people love this card. Like, I've seen there's a small group of people that absolutely can't get enough of this card. I... I don't know how I feel about it yet, honestly. I, I think it can be useful. I don't think it's as insane as some people want to say it is. Do you know what the reasoning behind it being really good is? Because hmm. I, I, I personally can't find it. Yeah, uh, so apparently um, people, uh, I've seen some people like say on Twitter that they just like it in like, uh, mainly for standard. I don't think the card will see any play for a while. Um, but it's just uh, for like four or six mana, you can just spread some stats around the board and kind of just shore up like where your weaknesses on board are and kind of trade better. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a good card in an in a, in, a, in an aggro mirror or even a dude mirror because you can just trade up very cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if one of the one of the big things with the paladin mirrors is um you know late game you, you know you turn 12 or 13 
you've both got a roughly equal board a lot of the time, and top decking one of these is pretty huge because you can get that board back pretty significantly. Yeah, in a top deck situation, like I feel like any of the echo cards could be nuts there, yeah. but this one especially. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll be interested to see how this card fleshes out. Like I said, probably not gonna see any play in wild though. Pretty weak effect for that format. So uh, next we have Ghostly Charger. Uh, five mana, three four B. They're pushing beasts in all classes this expansion. Uh, five mana, three four with Divine Shield and Rush. Uh, basically the new Argent Commander. Probably worse. Um. So you're paying two extra mana, essentially, for Divine Shield and Rush. Um, I like the four health on this. The four yeah. health really makes this, like, not horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the four health makes it sturdier. Um, I, where, well, where, I, where would you see this? What deck would you see this in play, though? I, I don't think you see that. deck. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I don't think you see this in Agro Pally because it's just too expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for Dude Pally, you'd rather play your Quartermasters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Something else that re something else that really bothers me about this card is that um, it's a ghost yet a beast yet Haunted Creeper, the Spectral Spiders, the one ones are not beasts. And that mm. bothers me. That bothers me a lot. Uh, Blizzard, please. The inconsistencies. <laughs> Killing me here. First Moonkin and now this. Ghosts or Beast 2? Alright, so next we have Paragon of Light. And this is a 2 5 minion for 3 mana. Uh, while this minion has 3 or more attack, it's going to gain Taunt and Lifesteal. Uh, interesting design in that it uh, receives more uh, abilities if it's buffed. Yeah. All you need to do is give it a plus one, plus one, so like you could run some sort of Kelleset Paladin. Mm -hmm. This would be sick in that deck. Yeah. With Dial uh, Falfa, with, with Falfa, you've got a 4-5, which is insane. Right? Oh, no, sorry, no, 3-5 with Dial Wolf. Yeah. 3-5 yeah. Yeah. Taunt Lifesteal. Yeah. I think um, the Lifesteal is the most important part about what it gains getting the taunt's not super yeah good. you don't see a lot of lifestyle yeah. minions with good stat lines besides like yeah statue yeah uh, the lifestyle is what you're really trying to get and i, I believe there's uh, the the legendary is what you run this why you would run this in a deck the paladin legendary that's coming up yeah and um, what's, what's the other what's the other paladin legendary that the um is it wicker flame bristle there's a yeah, wicker flame bristle. burn bristle yeah burn bristle um you can you could also compare it to this card in a way you're getting much better stats for what it is with a mm -hmm. slight drawback i don't yeah you have to put some like, work into it yeah although i think it's that yeah this card plus blessing of might in like an aggro paladin deck um is a five five taunt lifesteal minion which is pretty good um yeah this card with like with even with like uh old the keeper voldemon becomes a three three taunt lifesteal which isn't the worst card uh it's on curve too how does it um, work with corpse taker with like if you have a divine sh divine shield taunt life seal stuff so does this count as a taunt life seal minion i don't uh, believe it, it does it, it, no it wouldn't because it, it doesn't have the stats until it enters the battlefield mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah so it wouldn't count for that yes. sadly it'd be no. real nice if it did no. um mm. but yeah i think this card could see a little bit of play just depends on uh where maybe maybe even an egg paladin who knows we'll see if it's good enough yeah because they play a lot of buffs so next we have a bell ringer sentry this is the one of the most hyped paladin cards i've seen people talk about uh secret paladin by the way uh, now you've got a 3-4 four for 4, Battle Cry and Death Rattle, put a secret from your deck into the battlefield. Ooh. It's uh, a powerful effect, I feel like. I don't know if it's the right effect for Paladin, though. Because their secrets tend to be the weaker ones that you just want a big old Christmas tree off of your challenger with. Yeah. 
Although it's harder to play around just one paladin secret. One of the things about mysterious challengers, you're like, all right, I know that my order, I know exactly how to order everything. Yeah, yeah. Because I have it's the not a secret. five effects. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting um, in that effect. Mm-hmm. I saw someone mention maybe you even cut mysterious challenger and make it like really aggressive, and then you play this instead to draw some of the uh, the cards. So that's something interesting to uh, consider. Because there is a Paladin Legendary coming up where you'd want to have some of those secrets in the deck. Yeah, I could uh, I could see a list like that. I think Challenger is very powerful still, so I think we could see both kind of lists like running this and Challenger yeah. maybe. But it does weaken up Challenger a lot, so we'll see. I think if you were gonna, I think if you're gonna run two of these and two challenges, you're gonna have to have ten secrets. A lot in the deck. of secrets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, not, normally you run about eight. Mm-hmm. I think you'd have to be running at least ten. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Other, otherwise, <laughs> other, otherwise, you're deck being secrets. Otherwise, you're just diluting your challenger. Yeah, that's true. You'd, you'd well, cycle you through really your deck very fast. Challenge, the first challenger is the only one that actually matters. Like the second one, you're typically playing and it only pulls one secret. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, go with 12 secret lists, two challengers, two bell ringers, <laughs> two mad scientists. Just go crazy. Oh, yeah. We'll see if this yeah, card C plays though. It, it'll probably see some lists, but we'll I'm, see I'm, how I'm powerful it actually is. This one. Yeah, I'm, I'm hyped for this one. I'm sure Slizzle is. Yeah, it's for <laughs> Agro Paladin. Uh, next card we have Silver Sword, uh, an eight mana Paladin weapons, uh, three four, uh, three attack four durability. After your hero attacks, give your minions plus one plus one. So we've got a Stormwind Knight effect, uh, repeatable on a sword. That is a 3 4 for 8. I, think I don't wild, think it's I th- playable. I think in wild, this card is trash. It mm-hmm. is just too slow for what it's oh, worth. So much mana. Tyrion yeah, doesn't yeah. see play at 8 mana in wild. And so I don't think Silver Sword think will ever see a chance. I think it's better than Bike Cleaver, though. I mean, Bike Cleaver doesn't see play anyway, but I think that this, this card might actually be better than Bike Cleaver. I think I the actually, deck that does play Vine Cleaver is Dude Paladin. Sometimes they play one of, and I feel like this card, it, it like, is not better than Vine Cleaver in that deck because obviously they want the one ones. Yeah, I mean, you might have a critical mass of one ones though. You'll you, if you play Stand Against Darkness the turn after you play this, like a board of two twos is significantly better than a board of one ones. Well, I feel like the dude decks don't play uh, Vine Cleaver for the weapon. They play Vine Cleaver for the ability with a weapon. Like, if it didn't have the Mega 2 2 ability, they wouldn't play Vine Cleaver. Or make 2 1 mm-hmm. once, sorry. Sure. So, I think. I don't think Vine Cleaver uh, gets cut from any dude lists for this card. Uh, I don't see. I don't think either of them see a lot of play anyway. So, yeah. most yeah, likely we don't see this card in wild. Anyway. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you get your board cleared, if you top deck a Vine Cleaver on turn 7. Or eight, you're relatively happy. You get your board clear and you top deck this, you're pretty sad. It's yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's pretty much game over. It's win more, I think, is this card. Yeah. Like every time. Uh, next, we have a Paladin Secret. Uh, one mana, epic. After your opponent plays three cards in a turn, draw two cards. Eh. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's kind of, kind, of, kind of the same with the Hunter Secret. It's just. Yeah, it's so yeah. hard to actually predict when your opponent's going to play three cards in a turn. Like, it's not a likely thing. Like, it's so easy to play around. I don't think it's the one class, though, where your opponent probably will play three cards against you. They're much more likely than Hunter, because you, you're typically going to play this in a like a secret paladin list. So Mysterious Challenger comes down, maybe you have one or two other minions, and you have to clear everything, so all the secrets are going to prop. So you may have to spend up to three cards, but I mean, it's not, I'm not saying it's spectacular as a card. Probably... This, do you think it's good enough off of a challenger? Because I, I think that's I the think main that... question about the card. Yeah. Uh, I like competitive spirit better in that deck. Mm-hmm. I like the, that, that's the spot you're really contesting with this. Does, is this better than competitive spirit? Okay. Well, I mean, you could consider it in, like, a more secret-heavy list like Slizzle brought up earlier. Like, if you're running, like, ten secrets. But in this case, if you're drawing drawing two cards from it, 
I think this is more suitable in, in, in a more mid rangey secret paladin where you're running Doctor Boom, Rag, Tyrion, mm -hmm. maybe even this, maybe even the Zoth, um, just just to help you draw into those big curve plays. Yeah, I can see that. I was thinking you want to play this more in a more aggressive version where it's like you're already out of cards, so the two cards will actually matter. Whereas like if you're playing a more mid range one, then you might have a card or two left in your hand. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Let's see. Next card, we've got uh, Cathedral Gargoyle. It is a 2-mana, two 2-2, two, two, battle crack. If you're holding a dragon, gain Taunt and Divine Shield. Who's ready for Dragon Paladin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when that was a deck. Um, yeah. It's a very well, interesting well, design. Um, the immediate thing that pops out to me is that you're pulling this card on a Call to Arms as a normal 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's an annoyatron. It's a better annoyatron with a condition, mm -hmm. but you have to play it out of hand. You yeah. Know, cold arms. Um, I mean, Dragon Paladin was never a top deck. Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe it there was, was a deck, but it wasn't a top deck. It was never a top deck. Mm -hmm. No. Um, maybe I could see this working with a fairy dragon, because you you'd want to play this on turn two. So you'd want to have you probably have to play fairy dragon in your deck as well, have a, yeah. more of an aggressive an aggressive style, dragon paladin. You do get to play um, the twilight guardian and blackwing corruptor in that deck. So those two cards just by themselves are really good cards. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. I can mm -hmm. see that probably. I mean, it's a two drop, and we've seen two drops have significant impacts on decks. So. Yeah, two drops are very important. The I, first, think, I think it's a card that needs to be down. tested. It's a card that needs to be tested in practice to, to mm -hmm. really understand. See if we can make it on. work. If we can unlock yeah. its yeah. secrets. I think that this has a higher possibility of being played in wild just because of the Blackwing Corruptor and Twilight Guardian oh, yeah. than the it card, is in standard. As yeah. far as I know, has almost no support in standard. So if it did find a home, it'd be in a wild deck most likely. Yeah. That being said, I'm not sure if it actually will, but we'll see. Maybe somebody can make this card work. Next, we have a Paladin Legendary, the Glass Knight. This is a 4-3 for 4 with Divine Shield. And whenever you restore health, it gains Divine Shield again. I uh, don't personally like this card. Yeah. So, so you, you, or go ahead. You, you, I was going to say, um, the, the stat line is pretty bad for 4-3. Four, four, mm -hmm. But I mean... How often is a paladin going to be healing? It'd have to be a control paladin, and and then you definitely don't want a four three. Yeah, four. like what what would you do with the for the four three divine shield as mm -hmm. a control paladin? So like the only time I think that this is relevant is with that three drop that they printed. So like life steal counts as restoring health. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you look at the stat line of this this is worse slightly worse than like piloted shredder if you can't restore the divine shield like it's comparable to like disciple of Cthune, how that used to be uh and like you could try to run that as like a good four drop like a solid thing but i think that you really have to like build your deck around having a bunch of life steal so this would have to be like a heavy mid-range into control paladin sort of deck where you're running like true silver and uh, like the new three drop so i don't think that there's a deck that immediately comes around with this but you can definitely go and try to make something happen maybe add it off a bunch of death rattles it feels it feels like a card you'd have to build around but the drawback there is it's not a very powerful card so why would yeah. you build around it so it's also it's also a legendary so yeah, only getting can... one too yeah yeah i can see so... this card as an epic but I feel like yeah. it's very weak for a legendary. I feel like they were Paladin has enough good. Pa Paladin has enough good legendaries anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We don't need. I'm, that I'm looking at you, Tyrion. Yeah. So speaking of Paladin legendaries, here's our next one: a five-five for five uh, battle cry. Transform all one-cost cards in your deck into legendary minions. So you play this to turn think... right before mysterious challenger, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think it's the best time to play it, most likely. I think this card is actually pretty awesome. Um, really? Yeah, I think this card is actually really good. Um, and here's my reasoning. Going back to this super heavy, um, 
like 10 to 12 secret paladin list mm -hmm. with um, two challenges and two of your three, four battle cry death rattle guys mm -hmm. with the secrets. Um, once you play your challenger, um, you don't have any late game in the deck. You just have your Prince Liam to soak up the remaining one cost cards and just hope for some good legendaries. See, my problem with this card is the same problem I have with all of the turn whatever into random legendary minions. Uh, like, uh, what have they been in the past? Gold Monkey uh, or Elise or whatever it was, the Trailblazer. Um, th these kind of effects, y you have to remember the random legendary minions. Like, there are so many bad legendaries in this game. For all you know, you're just going to get a deck full of Glass Knights. Like, you, you just don't want well, a lot those of... Those aren't better than, like, a random secret off the top, though. I would I would love to get a Glass Knight as opposed to, a, like, a one-mana secret, if I have that cards. Or That's the, the point, general. though. The uh, By the time, like, you could play that and you would want to play this card in Secret Paladin, like, drawing those cards off the top of your deck, those random legendaries, like, you're probably going to lose either way at that spot. Like, you should have already been winning before you cast this card. I don't think drawing random legendaries off the top of your deck is going to save you. Like, and if you're taking all the secrets out of your deck, you're conceding the power that that deck has to just fill the board with secrets and minions. Yeah. But also, it's, it's cards, not spells. So if you are running a very heavy, very aggressive Paladin deck, the whole ton of one drops. That's the one thing I was looking yeah. at. If you go in and yeah. make like a super hyper, hyper aggro deck with like 15 one drops, and then like you play this like no you, the, this is the top of the curve the five drop is the highest card maybe you play Terra, but like yeah that would be... i mean it, it's still like it'd be an interesting deck but any deck that's just filled with random legendary minions is going to be bad like there are so many legendary minions that are just not impactful they just don't do enough for the board and you're just yeah, like, these cards have to still be in your deck for his ability. It doesn't transform the cards in your hand at all. So, not only, like, are you turning a lot of the cards in your deck into bad or, like, random, oh. most likely bad legendary minions, you still have to then draw these cards, too. Like, one yeah, by one. Yeah, I thought it was in your hand and deck. No, nope. So it was, like, Just maybe you could deck. hold on to some of the secrets. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. Significantly worse, actually. Yeah, it's <laughs> it just seems like such a rough card to actually get good value off of it all. So I don't, especially in Wild, like I don't think we're going to see this card in Wild. But I'm sure we'll see Slizzle uh, laddering with this card in some weird secret Paladin oh, deck yes. soon. So, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, we're excited you, you, you for that one. You guarantee that. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So done with Paladin cards. Next we are on to Priest. Uh, we have a two-mana spell here. Divine Him restores six health to all friendly characters. Circle of Healing on Steroids. Uh, Uther is crying. Mm -hmm. think... Somebody call him. <laughs> uh, this card is... I don't know if it's better than Circle. It's probably a little better than Circle of Healing in a deck that would want... At the same time, though, Circle of Healing is free and uh, heals yeah. enemy minions, so you can get more value off of your uh, clerics with Circle of Healing than this card. This is also terrible with Akonai Sulkies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just bad. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. One, so, of the powers, one of the powers of Circle of Healing is the uh, Akonai Soul Priest combo. Yeah, so Circle's probably is always yeah. better than this card. Most likely. So, yeah, yeah. I, doubt, I doubt we see this card in Wild, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, next we have Squashling. Uh, two mana, two one with Echo. Battle Cry, restore two health. Ten mana, we're restoring ten health and getting five two ones, guys. This could be a Pyroblast if you have an Arcanine on the board. So that's mm. neat. yeah, I that is cool. I think there's a lot of combo potential with this card, actually. Yeah, with, hey. yeah, with the with the Akin, like just for OTKs. I mean, mm. I mean, it's an alternative way of doing the DK Anduin Raza combo, mm -hmm. even though it's two mana now. But I think there's potential for this to have some sort of crazy priest OTK. Yeah, I'd be really interested to see some Velen OTK list with Soul Priest in this card and whatnot. Man, That'd this be, card would have been cool. good if um, if you had the hero power cost zero off of yeah, Raza. Yeah, this card would have been, been fantastic great. in Raza, yeah. <laughs> it would have been just great. 10, 10 mana, 20 damage? That would be mm -hmm. sad. 
Yeah. All right. So next we have Quartz Elemental. It is a 5-8 for 5, and it can't attack while damaged. This might be uh, one of the stupidest cards I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Right. It goes in Silence Priest, man. It's a, it's a great card there. Uh, uh, Elemental Priest coming at you, by the way. Why not they just, just are, raise it? They're Maybe stapling right. any uh, tribal tags yeah. they can to any class these days. Yeah. They want it for random effects, right? They're like, oh yeah, we want to summon this one for random effects, this one for random effects. Nah, oh. Yeah, that has to be what it is, honestly. F Firelands portal nerf. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh man. man. Oh man, that's <laughs> brutal. That's where we're going to see this card. That's, poor... that's where we see this card. Yeah, poor mages. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Next they, they we've got, got, enough, got enough coming. Yeah. Next we have actually a very interesting effect. Uh, five mana for a four damage spell to a minion, and if it kills it, add a copy of that minion to your hand. So immediately, like what comes to mind is the fact that it probably won't see a lot of play because it's very, I feel like, overcosted for four damage, and the ability is all right, but it's not backbreaking by any means. But when I think about um, this card more, I feel like down the line, if there's some very like convoluted mirror match or convoluted control match, uh, this card could really change that. Because that could be a very powerful effect if you can make like two of a card that is a staple in that sort of matchup. Also, um, Barnes has four health. Mm. So you could um, bring, you, bring, you, bring our good friend back to the hand or our opponent. Big Priest Mirrors, boys. <laughs> Yeah. Putting Barnes in the res pool <laughs> and adding one to your hand. This breaks it wide open. But you take your opponent's Barnes. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're shooting your opponent's Barnes. Oh, I was thinking about shooting your own Barnes, too. Nope. You can do that. If... Nope, just shooting theirs. This that's is great. Like, if you, if you don't have your Barnes, like, well, if you can't have a Barnes, you can't have a... Mm-hmm. Everybody. Everybody gets a Barnes now. <laughs> yeah. Card's perfect. I think it could be really interesting, though, in some very narrow situations down the road. But we'll have to see. Next, we have Coffin Crasher. This card has uh, been getting a lot of talk in the set. Uh, it is a 6 5 for 6 Death Rattle. Summon a Death Rattle minion from your hand. Four. It's a powerful effect, to be sure. I actually really like this card. Yeah, it's I like the card a lot. It's some sort too. of like, control priest. No, not necessarily big priest, because this mm -hmm. isn't the best thing to no. pull out. Mm -hmm. Like being able to sneak out an obsidian statue on turn six mm -hmm. is is comparable to what Warlock is doing when they're sneaking their void lords out. Yeah, we have to remember. Uh, you this card has to die. It's a death rattle. It's not a battle cry on this card. Oh, but I mean, still. Being yeah, able to it just it takes a little longer to kill it usually. Yeah. Um, also, this card interests me, and I think we could see it in some control priest deck down the line. Because you have interactions like play on turn 10, 10 mana, play Umbra, play Coffin Crasher, put in a statue oh. off the Coffin oh. Crasher, trigger statue, kill one of your opponent's minions, and have that board. So Yeah, I, I, I could see this in a maybe Reno, but I think just a straight up control Nazoth mm -hmm, Priest. Exactly, too. yeah. And we, um, and we, got Sylvan we got Sylvanas in Wild, like this kind of... A lot of people have pointed out this card actually makes it really bad that Cube has Death Rattle, like, naturally. Oh, yeah, because mm -hmm. you can pull out a Cube. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... I really do wish, honestly, Cube gained Death Rattle from its ability because it does kind of suck feeling... Or it does kind of feel bad seeing that card come off Enzoth and, like, having that card maybe come in off Coffin Crasher. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. otherwise... Warlock, though. It's way overpowered if it doesn't come out of the Mizoth pool. Yeah. Stats are so good for that, for, the, for what it does, though. Like, mm -hmm, 6 by 6 sure. is pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, I think we could see an Enzoth Priest in Wild soon. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Nightscale Matriarch. Now, this is a 4 9 dragon for 7 in Priest. Uh, whenever a friendly minion is healed, summon a 3 3 whelp. Uh, these have to be the biggest whelps we've seen yet, right? That's, what, what that's, not oh, that's, that's not a whelp. Oh, that's not a whelp. Wow. Wow. Yeah, leaked. Uh, all right. So I don't. 
think we're going to see the seven mana dragon for four as a four nine C a lot of play. Yeah. I uh, think that this is just more of them trying to balance Nether Spite Historian. So, yeah. so now now you get less of the operative, less of the dust breaker out of the random dragon. So that's, what if this card is uh, just going to be nuts off historians? <laughs> what if it's just brutal? <laughs> We're all doomed. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, well, next we have Vivid Nightmare. Um, now, this is a card I'm excited to see some decks around. <laughs> um, choose a fr three mana for a spell. Choose a friendly minion. Summon a copy of it with one health remaining. Um, immediately, oh. yeah, yeah. The combo potential is <laughs> all I'm thinking about for this card. Like, I I want to see Maligoses and Valens. Uh, Vivid Nightmare. Yeah basically i want to see people thinking, do disgusting I, I, things I, i'm thinking more like um you go shadow essence and then i guess you want mana shot though i think shadow essence spirit lash through the nightmare but that's 11 mana um, i'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking of the big priest options with this card just to get your resurrect feature it's only good on a ragnaros really uh, yeah. Also, the problem with this card is that it doesn't really do a lot for Big Priest. Um, it's generally worse than just a Resurrect, I think. Yeah. I think you use this in like that <clears throat> Malagos Del and Big mm. Priest shell. That's oh, where absolutely, this, yeah. Yeah, that's where this shines. Yep, that's where I'm waiting to see mm. this card. Uh, there's just like any sort of copy effect similar to this is going to have a lot of combo potential. Um, being Even with like. Even with like Potion of Madness and um, what's the what's the name? what's the card that reduces the attack the spell? Pint size, pint size potion. potion. Pint size potion. Or... Yeah, pint size uh, potion of madness in this. You could steal some pretty key cards from your opponent that they might need. Well, yeah. they're not they're go steal, back it's just like copies. Doesn't, doesn't well, it go back? Because... Yeah, uh, it's just like that would enable you to make copies of your opponent's minions if you needed to. Yeah, not not for a big priest match, just in some sort of control priest. Well, no, if you if you steal their minion, it has an aura on it that goes back to your opponent at the end of the turn. So the one that you summon will also go back to your opponent. Oh yeah, that's true. Because oh, it's a that's copy. A yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's so that's we can give our opponents point. doomsayers after <laughs> after we take it from them, obviously. Uh, uh yeah, I I'm interested to see the combo potential with this card for sure. Uh, next we have Glitter Moth, uh, an odd priest card. The only one we're actually seeing, so that's curious. Uh, five mana for a 4-4 four, four beast. Uh, if your deck has only odd cost cards, double the health of your other minions. I think the effect feels very weak for a 4-4 four, four for five. Also, um, so restrictive for such a weak effect. But what about Void Ripper? Void Ripper is the three mana swap the health and min an attack of all your minions mm -hmm. so if you if you have a pretty decent high health board you can go potential otk on for two cards on night on turn nine turn eight well i mean you'd have to basically play you'd have to have like a reasonably sized board and then pay eight mana for a kind of restricted effect that almost just feels like a branching paths or a savage roar sometimes mm -hmm. and to be yeah and we think of it that way it's like the um the combo priest usually just kill you, kill you a lot faster than turn nine, mm -hmm. and usually it was just one minion. Yeah, it feels like a lot of the times this card is just going to be a very mediocre ability. Yeah, mid range priest typically doesn't do well. Mm -hmm. Just in general, you, you, your hero power is not like an incremental hero power until yeah. like late in the game. So you're just not I'm going over the never, top. I'm enough. never really a big fan of mid range priest cards mm -hmm. and this is what exactly what it is yeah exactly so i don't think we'll yeah. see uh, a lot of play out of this card i don't even think we'll see an odd priest deck but we'll see so next we have a uh, legendary a lot of people are excited for i think it's an interesting design at least uh camellios we've got one mana for a one one beast in priest each turn this is in your hand transform it into a card your opponent is holding now I'm actually kind of curious as to why they didn't make this like a neutral legendary. Because I don't see why this chameleon's a priest card. I think it's a priest card because of all of the priest effects where you can, um, like, mind vision steal from your opponent's hand or cards that we can steal from your opponent's deck. 
So I, I, I think this is a card that you would keep in your mulligan and just not play and just give you lots of information about your opponent's hand mm -hmm. and would just help you better with your Curious Glimmer Roots, your um, the one mana death rattle where you take a card from your opponent's deck just to give you that extra insight. Yeah, that's a lot of the talk I see about this card is in the context of being just information on your opponent's hand, which is absolutely yeah. true because every turn you're getting new information off of it most likely. It's, it's a one mana stream snap your opponent. Yeah, if only. <laughs> if only it was that good. If only. Play it in every the deck. Thing about, the thing about this is it doesn't slot into any current priest deck that we're running in wild. Mm. Like maybe in like control priest, like the current control priest, you'll find it. But in the most powerful priest archetypes, in big priest, you probably don't want to be running this. Oh, I'm playing this um, big priest every time. This gets pulled out. <laughs> Imagine this getting pulled. No, nah, it's great in the mirror. Hey, here's uh, a question. Here's Shadow a question, Essence though. into a 5-5 Camellia. <laughs> um, here's a question, though. For the deck trackers, though, on our deck trackers, do you think um, the deck trackers will, with this card, reveal us all the cards that have been tracked throughout the game? So yeah, it'll be interesting to see the... how they program this into the deck yeah, trackers. Yeah, if we can hand track all the cards our opponent has. It those is, that, those it, poor, it those poor deck trackers. It doesn't show you which card it is, though, in their hand. It says that uh, the Camellios turns into one of the cards that's in your opponent's hand. So you don't yeah, know it doesn't stay in position, card. yeah. Oh, that, that is true, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're going to have to mm -hmm. actually pay attention and not your deck tracker's probably not going to be able to do it for you. Mm -hmm. poor, poor deck tracker. <laughs> So that, I think I think that yeah. Next we have. Uh, I like uh, the card. Yeah, I like the card. I hopefully it sees play. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it will though. Uh, next we have a priest legendary. Oh, uh, another one. Yeah, lady in white. So this is a six mana five five. That when you cast it, you're gonna cast inner fire on every minion that's in your deck. Uh, another one of those cards that affects minions in your deck only, not the ones in your hand. Uh, this is gonna be a very interesting effect. Uh, I'm afraid of this card. Ultra Swords <laughs> are 14 14. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. The big thing that I find is that this is going to be comparable to, like, Keleset. In the decks that you're playing this, if you have this on turn six, you're going to pretty much win the game. But if you have this, if you have a deck designed around this, like, in it's your bottom two or three cards, it's going to be hard for you to win the game. Yeah, I feel like it's very different than Kelseth and that Kelseth comes down so early that it enables a lot of those situations you were talking about where it's like, oh, they had Kelseth, they're at a huge, huge advantage. I feel like this coming down on turn six, um, curve-wise, isn't necessarily near as bad because then you still have to draw the minions as well. Yeah, well, definitely, but... Which I is feel... like the problem with Kelseth, but at least with Kelseth it's coming down on turn two or turn yeah. one even, so... I feel like it suffers from that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this has more of an Alaneth effect, where, um, like with Alaneth, you play Alaneth on six, and then there's such a good chance that you can kill your opponent based on all your draws. On the other hand, with Priest, by the time you've got to turn six, you've probably filled up your hand with all sorts of spells and such, in, like Divine, um, you know, divine Spirits, so who knows what else. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like the potential for you to get lethal once you've played this card if you're drawing, you know, one or two cards every turn, are pretty high. Yeah, I. Um, if you can sort of generate enough value for yourself after you play this card, I think it's always going to shore up like any weaknesses your deck had and win the game. But at the same mm -hmm. time, I think it's still kind of like once you get this card down on curve, you're like, okay, and now I have to actually draw my minions, because like mm -hmm. you're rarely going to be able to play a priest deck with just minions that are benefit from this. So. There's there's going to be games you play this on curve and then don't draw another minion that benefits from it before you're dead. Mm -hmm. Only time so, will tell, I guess. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I think it's a po very powerful effect, though. All right, so uh, after Priest, we're on Rogue here. We've got a two-mana spell, Cheap Shot. Uh, it has Echo and deals two damage to a minion only. Uh, this card's card insane. Uh, it's a very powerful effect, yeah. like, especially with Echo. I uh, I see a lot of minions getting shot down with the spell uh, in Miracle Rogue, something like that. I mean, if you have your gadget, even if you even with yeah with your gadget, if you have a gadget and up, this is ridiculous. This card, mm -hmm. yeah, assuming your opponent has a board to deal with. Yeah, 
The you, Miracle Road you, list is really tight, though, right? Like, it's really hard to fit in a lot of spells in, your, in the current, like, builds of Miracle Rogue that you have. Like, what are you taking out to put this in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh... Yeah, is it better than any of the removal Miracle Rogue already has? Yeah, like, I, I think I'd rather have Eviscerate, which can go face, as opposed mm -hmm. to this. I think yeah. you'd be running. I think you'd be running this instead of a lot of the cards that generate coins, because with the coin, yes, the coin is zero mana, but you only get one. Whereas with this, you know, you play your gadgets in on six, maybe even turn seven with a conceal, but then turn eight, you know, you're going to be able to play, you know, draw at least four cards off this and do some board damage. Mm -hmm. So over some, do you think like? you're cutting Tomb Pillager for, for this. I mean, I, I personally think I like having Coin a little bit better just yeah. because you can you can Gadgets in on turn 6 and then Coin, and then you're getting like 2 or 3 more cards instantly. Mm. I, I, I think it's one of these decks where you got to test it to see what happens. But yeah. I, feel like this card, with it. I feel like this card has a lot of potential, though. Yeah, we'll see if it's good enough, especially for Wild, where it has a lot more to compete with. Uh, Blink Fox, uh, three mana, three three beast in rogue. <clears throat> Battle cry, add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. So stat wise, this card is good. Three three for three is reasonable, uh, and then it could give you a useful card. Um, I don't know how useful the burgle effect is. Uh, it was good enough to get Swash Burglar play played in patches days, but that could also be only because of patches. So it was played before patches. It was there as a one drop. Just to have that it, before Mean Streets came out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think this card might see play if a rogue archetype enables it, but I doubt it, kind of. Uh, there's just the problem is there's no archetype that it currently fits in. Yeah, you have to make Verbal yeah. Rogue to. Like, this is like a mainstay, obviously, in Verbal Rogue, but mm -hmm. as a tempo card, it's not horrible because, like, a three mana, like you said, a three mana three three is good and. Getting a random card is, but it's the battle cry, right? As mm -hmm. opposed to the two mana, two two death rattle one, having mm -hmm. it, the ability to cast this late game, if you get a three, if you get this on turn ten off the top, you play this, and then you can play, most likely play the card that you get is good. Yeah, generally going to be able to. So, for for me, I think this card feels a little bit too slow. Um, normally with rogue, you're turn one playing a one drop, turn two weaponing up mm -hmm. turn three usually your opponent's board is significantly worse than yours so you want to start dealing with it um and i feel like just playing this on three might just be a little too slow if the meta is too fast yeah it it might be a little slow for rogue um because especially in wild like if you're gonna have a there's no mid range going mid range with a rogue deck i don't feel like uh you either gotta go like miracle or just full-on aggression so it, it'll be rough to find a spot in a deck. But uh, if it does, it could be a good card. Uh, Cutthroat Buccaneer. 2-4 Pirate for 3 mana. Give your weapon plus 1 attack with combo. Uh, cool. I've, seen, I've seen a lot of people like this card for like maybe an aggressive sort of pirate rogue list. I saw it being played in a, in the video with Dana and Ben Brode. Mm -hmm. And the card looked really powerful in that situation. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind they were both playing relatively underpowered decks. Right, of course. Um, but, I mean, this could be good in Pirate Rogue. Um, Pirate Rogue I, definitely I, has some support. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Ships a Cannon's a card in Wild. I know. Yeah. I, think it's a bit, I think it's a bit overkill using it in, like, a, um, a Kingsbane Rogue. Mm -hmm. But I think Pirate Rogue, this has some potential. Yeah, maybe we could see like a tempo pirate list come back, but I don't mm -hmm. know if this would just be the one card to actually enable the archetype. You know what I mean? I don't think it's this one that enables the archetype. I think it's another one that we're going to see in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So next we've got Pickpocket. Uh, a Burgle for two mana with Echo. Add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. This one's actually in my list of top five favorite cards. In the mm -hmm. expansion. Now, is that really, because you like the yeah. design or because you think it's good? Um, I, don't I don't necessarily know if it's good. Again, going back to the idea of 
dropping coins from a miracle verbal list mm -hmm. in place of pickpocket. Um, but I think just the ability to be able to generate so many random cards and with rogue has reduction effects with um with a throw peddler. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a first I think this is a really fun card to play. But also yeah. I think it'll be absolutely card, very fun. Yeah. I think this card could potentially make Virgil Rogue decent. Yeah. But I'm I'd be curious I'm to see. Maybe. I think this card really helps set Virgil Rogue have enough burgle effects now you you hit like a critical mass when you have this card you you can now include so many cards that you can steal from your opponent mm -hmm. that like you might have enough consistency at this point yeah so Just this, because this, of the history of stealing your opponent's minions cards yeah maybe this will be the card to make burgle rogue great again or for the also, first time even also i don't think burgle rogue is actually going to run for <laughs> oh <Yeah>. poor burgle <laughs> rogue oh no all right, so next we've got Mistwraith. This is a 3-5 for 4. Whenever you play an Echo card, gain plus 1, plus 1. Uh, very interesting card in just the design. Um, obviously, it's cool to see a card that gets uh, buffed by playing Echo cards when you can play Echo cards as many times as you want in a turn. Um, so, I, I don't what know. What cheap Echo cards are there? Uh, like, Rogue, is that previous one? Yeah, the, those previous two were the ones, yeah. yeah. I'm looking for, like, a one-mana Echo card, but at that point... I don't think there are any besides Unstable Evolution, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that card doesn't technically have Echo, does it? It just has the Echo ability. I, th I, think, might... they're, I think they're rewriting the card. Yeah. Okay. But to be honest, why would you run Mist Wraith when you could just run Questing Adventure? Exactly, yeah. Questing Adventure yeah. just does it better, yes, and it's, it's a neutral. So yeah. 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 And if you're playing a bunch of minions, why not just play the Rogue Quest? If yeah. If you're doing this for like an Echo Minion, like, just play mm -hmm. the Rogue Quest. Ooh, is there an Echo Minion that will no, enable Rogue? No, I've been looking no. for it. The cheapest one is three mana. Feels bad. All right, so next we have Cursed Castaway. Now, this is another pirate. Uh, six yeah. mana, though. Five, three pirate, rush. Death Rattle, draw a combo card from your deck. I mm. actually really like this card. Really? I think that this pushes I think this pushes the pirate rogue archetype because you're only playing three combo cards in that deck. Mm -hmm. Or, no, you're playing, um, you're playing uh, five, I think. You're playing Edwin Van Cleef. Mm -hmm. You're playing... Um, eviscerates and you're playing that other pirate so I think that those cards are all really good draws off of this and like playing with chips cannon being able to clear the board so that you're going to be able to get your other minions that are already on the board to go mm -hmm. face will be uh, sufficient enough like this gets through a bunch of taunts and stuff that you can that you'll most likely be dealing with on turn six I was gonna say now do you think it's playable in that deck even though it costs six mana It'll be tight. Yeah. I think that you can probably fit maybe one of these in, but I think that this this is going to be very... Uh, it's dependent on if the archetype's good, obviously, but I yeah. think you're going to run one mm -hmm. of these. I would be a lot more excited about this card if it costs, like, maybe five. Um, I think at five it could be, like, reasonable. I think at six it's almost kind of rough to run a 5-3 with Rush. In a, in a deck that you basically just want to be killing your opponent with, like pirates. It's definitely something different, though, that we haven't seen. Like, yeah, absolutely. definitely a lot of room for experimentation with this card. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, being able to draw any sort of particular card from your deck is always very powerful because it's almost a tutor-like effect. It yeah. just happens to I... suck when it's on something like that costs too much. Yeah. But uh, hopefully we'll see this card be useful. Uh, mm -hmm. Next we've got Spectral Cutlass. Now, this is a weapon in Rogue. Uh, four mana, 2-2, two, two, uh, attack and durability with uh, lifesteal. Whenever you play a card from another class, uh, gain plus one durability. This is the Burgle weapon, and I don't think it'll see play in the Burgle decks, if that is a thing. No. I think the attack so is weak. way too low for what it Yeah, is. two attack is just so brutal for a four mana weapon. Yeah. It's like, even it's a, even at, I think at 3-2, it would be maybe playable. Yeah, at 3-2 with yeah. lifesteal, it would be maybe playable. But with 2, you're just like, uh, you're just not doing enough. You're you're gaining yeah. 2 yeah. life. Like, you're drain like, I don't everything. Play, I don't want to play Deadly 
poisoned or um, like oil in a deck just to make this card good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's too build around to be good. Just and it's not really great for its stat line. No. Uh, next we have Wanted. Now this is a four mana rogue spell. Deal three damage to a minion. If it kills it, add a coin to your hand. Now, is this the spell Miracle is looking for? So this card's comparable to Tomb Pillager. Mm -hmm. It's the same mana slot. It also gives you a coin. Uh, I think that a 5-4 body is better than... Because it's proactive, than mm -hmm. uh, like dealing three damage to a minion. If you think that you're going to be behind this Miracle Road because like it's a really aggressive meta, then maybe you play this. But I still would prefer to have the 5-4 mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm with Danny on that. It just yeah. seems that there's so many better tools that do roughly the same thing yeah, in Wild. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the it only just thing seems... I would consider... Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. Right. The only time I would think about this is if I want to run more than one Tomb Villager. Mm. Uh, more than two, rather. So, yeah, yeah. It, like if you need like the third tomb pillager slot, I could see that for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll be interesting because like I mean, obviously you can prep this card, um, which is interaction tomb pillager doesn't have. But I don't know if it'll be good enough to get see like see play because like Miracle Rogue already doesn't have the tools it needs to thrive in wild. So mm -hmm. it, this definitely isn't the card that's gonna make it a thing. Um, yeah. Next, we have a legendary rogue card. 2-2 uh, two, two for 3. Uh, minion with Echo. Uh, Battlecry, add a random legendary minion to your hand. Um, this card is very uh, interesting and flavorful. I don't think we will see it in any competitive deck, especially in Wild. I, I wish it was 2 mana. Yeah, 2 mana yeah. versus 3 mana with Echo would make a lot of difference. I think at two mana, this, this two card mana, could though, see play. If in two mana, this probably sees play in Quest Rogue. Like, the, that's how broken Echo is. Mm -hmm. I think that Quest Rogue, and essentially at that point, it's like, okay, I'll play this card. Uh, you play the quest, and then you play this card a bunch of times. That to has to be, that, that just yeah. has to be why this card doesn't cost two, is because of Quest Rogue. Mm -hmm. Honestly, because it would be a very oh, yeah. cool and possibly playable card at two mana, but. At three, I don't think it's doing enough. Imagine a, imagine a handful of legendaries that all cost five and they're five fives. Mm -hmm. that, that, that could be cool. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> legendaries typically have really good battle cries, so. Yeah. You want five out of five five patches. Yeah. <laughs> no charge. That's how we do it. All right, so next we have Tess Greymane, uh, oh, King of the Burgle Rogues, or Queen, I'm sorry. Uh, so we've got uh, the 6-6 six, six for 8. Battlecry, replay every card from another class that you've played this game. So this card, I would also play this card with Yogg, to be honest. Like, oh, if you're going to go... If yeah. Gonna, if you're going to go full, like, RNG rogue... Um, yeah, casino rogue. I can't wait. I can't wait until people demand that I play that on stream. It'll be great. Yeah, <laughs> I I think this card would have to, I think because of the nature of Burgle Rogue with so many potentially bad spells you're going to play, mm -hmm. I think this card is what you might need to help swing games. Oh yeah, like this yeah. reminds me of the the Shaman Legendary that we're going to see soon, yeah. the Battlecry copying one. One thing I'm, I'm that really... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm assuming that this follows the same rules as Yogg, whereas if it somehow kills itself, it stops casting the spells or bounces it back to hand or something. So. I think that's I a Yogg-specific thing. Yeah, I think that's Yogg only. I think that for the other two, for this one and the Shaman one, they play out. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Ooh. The yeah, one thing I... that I want to mention about this card is that if Burgle Rogue ever gets... Burgle Rogue as a deck can't get good because of this card because if you ever have this as a like a tier one deck or something like you're gonna be playing other rogues on the ladder and when you're playing against other rogues you're stealing rogue cards from their deck and this summons nothing oh so, wow yeah. so <laughs> if rogue is ever good this card like another version of rogue is perfectly better every single time yeah burgle rogue cuts this card from your matches yeah <laughs> feels convoluted man <laughs> 
All right, so that's all the rogue cards. Next, we have a shaman spell to start off these cards. Uh, zero mana, deal two damage to a minion for overload one. I like this card a lot. Oh. Very good card. Um, yeah. Free value, especially being removal, is just nuts. Like, it's, like well, the back step, it's like the backstab to shaman, but mm -hmm. you can always target, and it's got a bit of overload. Yeah. That's a shaman cast, too. Yeah. But Overload's typically good with Shaman because you can synergize with a lot of things. Turn one, Tunnel Trog, coin Tunnel Trog, zap something. Yeah, that's... Sounds fun, oh right? That's crazy, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even think... It, I didn't even consider this an aggro Shaman until mm -hmm. now. Yep. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's I think this terrifying. card... We'll see it, and I think it'll be gross, but... <laughs> <laughs> Next card, we've got Witch's Apprentice. A zero one one beast for one. Uh, taunt and Battlecry add a random shaman spell to your hand. Uh, I don't think the add a random shaman spell to your hand mechanic will be very powerful at all. It saves no, a lot there, of support in the set. There are so many bad shaman spells. Mm -hmm. so, there are so many. Uh, what's the one so that gives all your fair, totems though, plus two health? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there are always really bad ones, but you also have like bloodlust and stuff like that. There are a Four lot of mana hex. Well, well, yeah, hex isn't mm -hmm. good as well. There, there, there are some bad ones, but it's better mm -hmm. than like something like Rune Spear. Like Rune Spear was so bad because you can't target things. Yeah, exactly. Really bad. The thing about random shaman spells is that with enough of them, you were able to like they synergize well with each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you have the thing that adds a bunch of every single um, minion gets totems. Like that synergizes with okay with the um, give your totems health. So if you get enough of them, then I think that it synergizes well enough. Yeah, I don't think this card is good enough for it. Like, it's possible. I think the only way we'll see that situation you're talking about is with like just with Hagatha. Um, yeah, I think, oh, I, I I think that's the only. It. Yeah, I think Hagatha is the only actual generate random shaman spells card that we'll see play. But mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting one to have. I think it's just a very flavorful card more than anything. And the, the art's awesome. Yeah, the art yeah. is awesome. Look at his cute little hat. Probably the best it's art great. for expansion. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so next we have Ghostlight Angler. Now this in Quest Rogue, this is what we need. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, so we've got a 2-2 Murloc for two, and it echoes. Um, so just, you know, fill the, fill the board with 2-2 two -two Murlocs, call it a day. Um, Shaman Quest, let's go. Mm -hmm. yeah, blood, blood, Shaman next, Quest, let's go. Uh, do, you, do you think this will make Shaman Quest the Tier 1 Wild deck? You think it's finally the card it's been waiting for? It definitely improves the deck, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I don't think we'll see this card. Even if it's even in aggressive decks, it's too slow. Doesn't do yeah. it for you. Uh, next, we've got Blazing Invocation. Uh, one mana Shaman spell. Discover a Battle Cry minion. So it's a little bit like the Rogue's um, one mana Discover a Death Rattle minion. Mm -hmm. but, Journey Below. Um, Blizzard kind of tried to push Battle Cry Shaman, I think, back in TGT, was mm -hmm. it? And it, it might have been whispers, get, right? Where they had the whisper. rumbling elemental. Yeah. Yeah, and it just it was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, there was one that was yeah. semi good, where when they you, you started with evolve, and then you had a lot of minions that had really powerful battle cries, but like low costed bodies, mm -hmm. and then you would go and you'd evolve after, and then you just just essentially level everything up to a playable body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm interested. There was a fairly good deck. It was off the meta, but I, I'm interested to see with all the tools that Shaman is getting, especially this card, um, to see if you can take something from that shell and uh, essentially make a battle cry type of Shaman. That'd be interesting. I don't think the cards that function like this are usually powerful enough, but I mean, maybe the battle cry one will be because then at least you're getting a uh, guaranteed value off of it for sure. Yeah. The issue is that there's so many battle cry minions in the game. Like mm -hmm. almost could, every minion is a battle cry minion. Yeah, it could be very narrow and inconsistent, cry. for sure. Mm -hmm. But RNG, you know how it goes. Uh, next card we have here: uh, Earth and Might, two mana for a shaman spell. Give a minion plus two plus two. If it's an elemental, add a random elemental to your hand. I think I would have liked to have seen this card mm -hmm. as add a copy of that elemental to your hand. Um, other than that, I don't think this card will see any play at all. It's, Not only it's is... 
not only is the buff like two two for two not good enough, uh, the effect is also just not good enough. Yeah. Little... Like... yeah. You're gonna get fireflies. Let's be honest. Yeah. You, you, you get any. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the only time like I've seen a plus two plus two uh, good buff be good enough is in Druid, right? When you're playing a deck that specifically revolves around buffing your minions. And it draws a so, card too. Yeah. I don't think it'd well, be played if it didn't draw a card. Is... This is pseudo draw card. Like, it gives you value. I think card. random elemental is way yeah. worse than draw card, though. Not if your entire deck synergizes around elementals, though. There are a lot of bad elementals, especially in Shaman. I don't have to look at them. I don't know how good or bad You get, like, elemental. Dust Devil, Whispering Elemental, oh, cards like that. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it'll be a rough card. I don't think we'll see it. Uh, now, this is a very uh, interesting one. Merc Spark Eel. So, 2-3, Beast for 2, uh, Battle Cry. If your deck has only even cost cards, deal 2 damage. That's uh, a pretty powerful effect for a 2-drop. Yes, if uh, if <laughs> even Shaman does randomly become a thing, that is a very strong 2-drop. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, c- c- can we have a moment of silence for um, River Crocolisk? Yeah, rip River Crocolisk. <laughs> Poor guy. This guy even does the whole water thing better than him. Like, Crocolisk doesn't do anything better now. <laughs> Feels bad, yeah. but if, if 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 even shaman's a thing, this card's insane. Yeah, if even shaman is a thing, this card will see play. Absolutely. Uh, next we've got Speaking totem crusher. Shaman. Yeah. Speaking of even shaman, so a two three <laughs> beast with taunt, four mana, uh, battle cry, destroy your totems and gain plus two plus two for each totem destroyed. I think this card is garbage. Yeah. Personally. I would much rather have a white board and then wait one more turn and then Bloodlust and play this. Exactly. Like, how yeah. how is Bloodlust not just better than this card? Yeah. It gets silenced. Be... It's used to so much value in so many different yeah. ways. Also, you would be so sad as Hunter getting this card randomly. Mm-hmm. It's just so oh, bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, this is just a bad card. Like, destroy yeah. your own board to make one big minion that could get silenced or... Exactly, yeah. Tar- yes, target removed. And you see all those eggs you have over there? Put them in this one basket. That's, yeah. that's what we want you to do. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think that one will see play. Next, we've got Bog Shaper. Seven mana, four eight elemental. When you cast a spell, draw a minion from your deck. I feel that like it has a very so powerful effect. It's really slow, though. Mm-hmm. It's very slow. Especially in Shaman, a class that doesn't historically like to be super slow. This would have to be some sort of control. Not even oh, yeah, absolutely. Not, not necessarily Elemental Shaman, but just some sort of control Shaman. Yeah. Like, if you if you really want to get your Mazoth for turn 10, um, you could play this on 8. Maybe and but yeah, it's it's really really slow. It's a powerful effect, but I feel like tacked to such uh, a high mana cost, it's not gonna ever be able to actually make the impact it wants to. Um, it's yeah, cause like it's not gonna live probably. Uh, it it's not even that big. It's just a four eight for seven. Um, so I feel like anytime it's just going to be a target. It will be something your opponents have to deal with, so maybe it could see play in some control shaman deck. But I don't think it's going to be great. By I think you'll see this more as a random elemental, like off of Servant of Kalamos, or even off that two meta thing. Yeah. The two meta one we saw earlier, the two meta spell. Mm-hmm. Like that, you'll see this more as a random elemental than actually it played. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Next, uh, oh, here we go, Hagatha. Um, here's the uh, oh, the big card. Yeah, the only uh, hero card in the set. Uh, eight mana for a Hagatha the Witch. Battle Cry, deal three damage to all minions. And then its passive is whenever you play a uh, minion, add a random shaman spell to your hand. For free, of course. So... Does the spell cost zero or all the spells? Okay. The spell is normal. Normal normal cost, okay. Normal cost spell. Hmm. I think people are going to try this card out to no end. I don't like it that much myself. I think it's a lot of mana 
and kind of building around something that doesn't provide that powerful of an effect. I just don't like how the three damages to all minions. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 it, it takes a lot of work to build up a shaman board, and then to just destroy it so you can get some random spells. It doesn't seem very intuitive. I feel like it should be all of your opponent's minions, but then I feel like they would feel it's too similar to DK Rexar. That's true. One thing that I agree with you guys completely on that. The one thing that like gives me a flame of hope with this card is one of the interviews I read about uh, Ben Brode, and he said that like this card is the focal point of the entire expansion, like lore wise, and they really want to emphasize how like in the lore this card is really good. So I would assume that like throughout their playtesting, they made that that this card's good enough to be like remembering this entire set by this card like that's what they wanted to do you know you know how like when you think about goblins versus gnomes you think of dr boom they want this card to be the card you think of when you think of uh the witchwood so i think see that's the thing i think in standard that could be the case like it's probably a lot more powerful in standard i don't know how the new like meta is going to look after rotation it's going to be very weird uh, I feel like in Wild, this card is not good enough at all. Yeah. In Wild, like, you you have to be playing a game-winning sort of ability for 8 sure. mana. You need to be impacting the board. You need to be just doing something uh, very proactive for 8 mana. Mm -hmm. This card, yeah. the only proactive thing it does, it, it's an excavated evil that costs 8 mana that you might get a little more value from eventually. I feel like in Wild, you're more likely to get a va uh, more more likely to get value out of the fact that then your opponent has an excavated evil in their deck. Honestly, like it's just not it's not an ability that's doing much for you in Wild. Like sure. random shaman spells really aren't helping you out against anything you're going to encounter in this format. No, and it costs yeah. eight once again. So yeah. it's it's not a card I think we will see. Um, maybe it could be very powerful in standard. I'd say look out for that. Uh, otherwise, have fun with it, basically. Bewitch all your mm -hmm. opponents. Uh, next, we have Shutterwalk. Shaman getting um, all the interesting here legendaries here, yeah. Let's talk, about, let's talk about this one that actually may have more of an impact than Wild Boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, sadly, the card's in Shaman. That's something we'll have to <laughs> look past, though. Uh, I would love to see this card as a neutral. I'd, fuck, uh, I'd lose my mind. Um, yeah. It would be fantastic. Um... Shutterwalk as a shaman card though we've got nine mana battle cry repeat all other battle cries from cards played this game targets chosen randomly man this is really good with jades so many so many abusable there effects immediately come to mind. This one. Mm -hmm. uh so what are we thinking like the biggest ones are in wild uh you've got reno of course um yeah let's see as far as you've got reno um what are some other extremely powerful ones? Like Kazakus. Um, you can't play Kazakus. That's a tri-class thing. Yeah. No oh, yeah. Thing. I forgot that's tri-class, not a neutral card. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Um, if, I mean, if, if Battle Cry Shaman is decent, um, this could be pretty pretty insane. Yeah. A Royal Drake is interesting. I just thought of that. Yeah. What about like a... Uh, oh, Enzoth. Oh... So this is the second is off, yeah. Yeah, it's the second is off oh, for yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Um, so maybe the Hagatha Shutter, like, see, that's the thing. I don't even think if you have like a Shutterwalk Reno control deck, like based around just like a super powerful Shutterwalk after all your other powerful battle cries. I don't know if Hagatha sees play in that deck even. Is the thing with Wild? Because why, why would you want to retrigger your three damage to all minions again? Exactly. It just seems like... Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just realized, yeah, Shutterwalk would copy Hagatha's Battle Cry too. Yeah, you wouldn't play them in the same deck. Yeah. Is, it's not just exactly. minions, it's just any Battle Cry. Yeah, because it's just cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it happens on Jade Claws as well. So like you can really go in heavy with the Jade mechanic. You can go there. And Shaman has all the Battle Cry stuff. You can play Aya, you can play the seven mana dude, you can play... Than the four mana spirit. Yeah, They're you don't even need to play Nazoth at that point. That would be yeah, yeah just a Jade Shutterwalk deck instead. Yeah, just a lot of interesting abilities with this. I personally want to see this in some sort of Reno 
uh, control deck with Nazoth and just like be super powerful. But we'll see. Uh, a lot of design space to work around with this card. So oh, yeah. hof hopefully people have fun with it. I want to see it abused, honestly. Uh, so that's all Shaman cards. Next we've got Warlock. Uh, one mana, one one demon with stealth. Give a random friendly minion plus two health as its death rattle. Uh, no, I'm not not no. having it. Next, not, next, yeah, not having it. <laughs> uh, next we've got Dusk Bat. It is a two four beast for three mana. Battle cry. If your hero took damage this turn, summon two one one bats. I would rather play M King Boss. Yeah, M King Boss is probably mm -hmm. just strictly better. Yeah. Not strictly better, but I mean, like 99% of the time. The card's for better. wild, the card is definitely outclassed. Uh, here's the bat for reference. Adorable. Very cute. Yeah. Nice token. Yep. So next we've got Fiendish Circle. Uh, four mana, summon four 1 1 imps. I, I heard this is Ron Raynat's favorite cards. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny yeah. that one. I feel like uh, we would have wanted this card back when the token zoo list was a lot more popular. Um, at the same time, I feel like in Wild, this is strictly just worse than Forbidden um, Tentacles. Like, they're implosion, they're demons, right? I guess. What's like, up? Implosion. This is Implosion with like a worse effect. Uh, implosion can be two. Yeah, well, yeah, inflation, inflation at least did damage to, to minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This card, yeah, uh, bottom line, will not see any play in wild. Very weak. No, no. Uh, next card, Dark Possession. Uh, one mana. Deal two damage to a friendly character and discover a demon. I am not happy this card exists. I'm just... This is to support that bad card. I mean, there's a couple other cards that are there to support that internally within their set. The, the real yeah. question is, how good is a discovered demon? Like, I don't, I don't think that, I think there's so many random demons in Wild that it's not worth running. But in yeah. standard, like, there's probably enough. That, like, if you can get a random Void Lord or something, it might be okay. But I yeah. don't think it's good enough. In here. Wild, you're only really trying to hit like Void Lords or Mogannis off of it. Mm. Um, I don't maybe think a, it'll... even a Void Caller. Yeah, maybe a Void Caller too. I Doom, don't Doom think guy, the card will see play not though. Yeah, I know. I, I, I initially, initially when I saw this card, I I was just like, oh man, Q blocks getting better. But then Wild has a much bigger card pool to mm -hmm. take from, so yeah, maybe it's not actually that good. I in think Wild. you just most of the time end up getting another poor Gul'dan pull off of it. You, you think of Bane of Doom, for example. Like, there's a reason that people don't play Bane of Doom. Yeah, Bane, also Bane of Doom costs five. But yeah, either way, both cards yeah. feel mediocre for the same reason. So next we have Curse of Weakness, a two mana warlock spell with Echo. Give all enemy minions negative two attack until your next turn. I really like this card. Really? Okay. Now this is an interesting yeah. one for sure. Um, where, I'm trying to think where we where you would see this where you'd see this played. You would play this and I, Void Ripper in like any type of I mean you can you do pull the Void Ripper back because that's a demon in Q block, but in like a cube block mirror where your opponent has like a, a wall of um like a wall of void lords or void walkers you play this and then flip it you just kill their entire board mm. do, you, do you think you'd ever see this in play in a zoo deck i mean if if, if there if there was a very heavy zoo meta um or even an aggro meta do you think this i think would you be want to be playing this as like a control card right because yeah, yeah the, i feel like the minus two attack i mean it's good against aggro too because it stops your opponent from pushing uh x times two amount of damage in mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. in zoo the reason it's not going to see play is because you can't really hold off on trading until you can play this card with zoo like you have to just be trading every turn so chances are you're going to find very awkward situations where you're not going to be able to get good value out of this card Mm -hmm. um, also, as far as this card in, say, control mirrors, um, like Q-Black mirrors or something with uh, Void Ripper, I think at that point you just want Twisting Nether instead. Yeah, but I think that this is a little bit more functional against aggro, right, than a Twisting Nether. Like, sure. I would I, run this. I, that's, the, that's the thing, though, is like, I, do you need something more functional against aggro in the deck that already plays Defile and Hellfire and Spellstones and everything? Like, I don't true. think this is better than any of those options. 
Um, I I like the idea of it, but I don't think like in wild it's going to be a good enough combo to play. I think the other AOE available just might be might outclass it. And like if you were wanting it in the control match in the control mirror kind of situations, that's when I think you just want twisting nether anyway. So it could be outclassed in both spots, but it'd be interesting to see this card played for sure, being like a a different sort of pint sized potion for warlock. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's definitely really interesting design on that mm -hmm. one. I like it actually, yeah, the design wise. Yeah. For sure. Uh next we've got Blood Witch. It is a four mana three six. At the start of your turn, deal one damage to your hero. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's my exact thought as well. Mm -hmm. It's like they want to make some sort of like self harm zoo deck, but then they understated, or they, yeah, they understated all the minions and then overcosted them. It's just like, what? what? <laughs> if, she, if, she, if she was a 5 6, I'd maybe decent. If she was um, a 5 6, it'd be playable. Uh, if yeah. it was a four six, it wouldn't still be. You yeah. can make this card a four six. We don't play it still. So. Yeah, I don't think anyway. So we'll move on from that one. Uh, we've got Rat Catcher. Now this is a really interesting minion. Yeah. Uh, three mana for a two two rush. Battle cry, destroy a friendly minion, and this card gains its attack and health. That's pretty cool. Yeah, really it's like a very card. cool effect. Um, I think now, I meant, think about like it, it in like, like a void caller or, or like a possessed lackey. This yeah, I was thinking, yeah, like this functions is like another dark pact with a different sort of upside as opposed to the healing. Yeah, I could see this card actually get played in Q block at some point. Um, yeah, I think maybe it's, it's like a one of. That. I think it's a two, uh, you might even run this as a two of because yeah. just the just the ability to like deal with an opponent's board early is fairly good i feel like the the problem is like a lot of times anything you're going to be destroying with rat catchers probably already like destroying something on their board like you're, you're only really like destroying big things on your own side with rat catcher because like you're not gonna i don't know there are some mid game spots where you could have this like the turn after one of your um enablers like void collar or lackey but a lot of the times, those aren't sitting on the board for more than a turn. I think this would be an amazing card in Zulok. The old Zulok list with your Doom Guards and Nalganis, and um, I think it would be really Throw strong. Some eggs. Yeah, I, I think I think this is be a really strong card in a mid-range Zoo list as well. I can see that. I guess I I really wish it had charge as opposed to just uh, rush. Yeah. But yeah, you used yeah. to run the demon that takes. Um, what is it? It absorbs the two minions on either side of it. Mm -hmm. Void, um, uh, well, void something. Void terror. No, yes. I don't uh, void, void terror. terror. Void yeah. terror. Void terror. Yeah. Yeah. Void terror. So, like that used to see some play. I mean, mostly because you would run eggs in that, and I mean, eggs a good card, but mm -hmm. uh, rat catcher has the ability to. Like some imagine this red summon a four four Nerubian. Like that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hopefully this card sees really nice card. Nice For card. Sure. Uh, Death Web Spider is our next minion. Uh, it is a five mana four six beast. If your hero took damage this turn, gain life steal. I think this card could see play in control decks in the future. This is really, really nice stats. And All you have to do is... Yeah, as long as you've tapped, it's just a 4-6 lifesteal for 5. Which is yeah, pretty good. I, mean, I, I pretty think good. I'd rather just play, like, Healbot, though, to guarantee that. I think Death Web Spider, is... I feel like, is something you want more to, like, contest the board than... Uh... It, it wouldn't be a Q-block card. It, like, the Control Warlock decks, I feel like, would play it, though. Um, just for, like... Because they are they play uh, like Dreadguard and stuff like that sometimes, um, so if you just play this instead, or um, just the four or five that deals one to everything is what I'm thinking of. Uh, oh yeah. Like, yeah. Say say play this instead. Um, it could just be better against some lists like that aren't Paladin basically. It, it also has synergy with Blood Witch. You could play Blood Witch on four. <laughs> this on five. Oh <laughs> my God. Alright, Slizzle, give me the zoo list as soon as you have it. 
<laughs> I, I like my Z-Dex. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next we've got a, uh, a Warlock Legendary, and this is one I've seen a lot of hype for, uh, Galinda Crowskin. Uh, this is six mana for a 3-7. Minions in your hand have Echo. That's um, pretty nice. That's interesting. So, Galinda Crowskin with, like, say a free Molten Giant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's a board oh, yeah. full of Giants. Uh, especially with the reverted nerf to Molten recently. Maybe this could. Maybe this is the card that pushes Handlock back into the meta. Could be. Mm. Uh, or I you could just play Naga. Yeah, I was going to say, you could just play it yeah. Naga. Yeah, you can play it in Naga. I, I don't know if it's... Is it good enough to be one of the top 30 cards in Naga? And I'd say probably, yeah. It's probably good enough because you can get Giants out otherwise like this works well with sea giant against say, so boards. so it on, works well with molten on turn 10 say like say your first naga turn got handled on like five or six uh say on turn 10 you play sea witch glinda crowskin you just need one giant to go off with a full board uh, I, I consider this consider this like a third naga right yeah Whereas like you, you uh, can go through and then like if you can get something down to zero no matter what like you might as yeah. well play it. Like and even if you, usually, if you, I feel like it would be. Even if you're like playing a mountain giant for two mana, like being able to get two mountain giants out on turn mm -hmm. ten with this, like that might be enough to get you over the hump, uh, just to get enough threats on board. Because that's one of the things that happens when you're playing like fatigue druid mm -hmm. against giants. Normally, your opponents like on uh, one or two threats from being able to beat you but you're able to grind them out. And this mm -hmm. card here can go and essentially like, give you the opportunity to generate more threats. It, it, it makes the deck a little bit more resilient. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. I think I think it will see play in the Giants lists and maybe some other lists in the future as well. I'm excited mm -hmm. to see how this card gets abused. Uh, next we have, uh, yep, uh, yeah. uh, keep the yeah. hits coming, boys. Uh, Lord Godfrey. So seven mana for a four four uh, battle cry. We're gonna deal two damage to all of the minions, and if any die, we're gonna repeat this battle cry. Um, defile. Um, just two on mana, steroids. two point defile on a four four body that sticks no matter what. This card's nuts. This, this card's gonna see play in almost any warlock archetype. I feel like besides zoo. Because warlock needed more removal, right? Yeah, warlock needed a super yeah. defile with a four four on it. One thing that's yeah. interesting is that this is the only removal spell for Warlock that's odd. So, like, now you have some support. If you were ever considering doing anything crazy and making an odd Warlock, mm -hmm. like, now you have a little bit more support for it. I think that's more... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a really, really good card, but, mm -hmm. like, it opens some avenues there as well. Yeah, does, does, the odd, is the odd, does the odd Warlock upgrade the hero power or reduce yes, it? Yes, it upgrades. Um, Oh, it upgrades it, right? The upgrade, the upgrade of Warlock Hero Power is ridiculous. That's the uh, two mana just draw a card. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no, no health um, loss. Are you sure the odd is? I thought the uh, odd one was the uh, reduced odd to one. Odd is Baku. Odd is uh, Hunter Hero Power cost three. Because, I mean, yeah, Baku is odd. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because it works with, like, the warrior stuff. Okay. Yeah, Godfrey's going to see play in almost any Warlock archetype that's controlish. So get ready to see this card dominate formats for a hot minute. Yeah. Uh, that Yeah, that's all the Warlock cards, though. Uh, moving on to Warrior, we have Warpath. Uh, this card's been getting a lot of hype, too. Uh, Echo, one damage to all minions. Uh, repeatable Whirlwinds, anyone? Everyone get in here. Mm -hmm. yeah, Everyone nice. get in here. Yeah, maybe maybe it'll push patient back into meta. Yeah. yeah, I think that uh, honestly, it's just a very versatile card for sure. Uh, I don't know. I just want to. I want to see a bunch of cool shit done with, or stuff done with this card. Um, I think it's. I think it's pretty abusable. It's interesting to compare and contrast this with revenge. Like revenge is the same mana cost same initial effects if you just play it once but mm -hmm. like i feel that revenge is a little bit better 
in like situations where playing against aggro and you're you have something to follow up on the board but um otherwise i think that like this is just better if you're playing like a, a deck that synergizes specifically around whirlwinds mm -hmm. yeah there's like a lot of things you can do with this card just... even this with state of fishes is pretty huge Mm, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, like just like yeah. any extra whirlwind you can get without actually spending another card on it, because like control warrior is all about managing resources. So, what about also some sort of combo with frosting berserker, where you mm. could just fire this thing off two, two or three times and just kill, kill your opponent. somebody with a berserker? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, berserkers are a lot more dangerous now. Yeah, like turn three berserker, play this twice on turn four. Mm -hmm. That's pretty insane. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Woodcutter's Axe is our next card. I like this card a lot. Yay! Two uh, mana weapon. Yeah, exactly. Warrior is <laughs> so stoked to get a two mana weapon back. Um, two mana, two attack, two durability, and when it dies, give plus two, plus one to a random friendly rush minion. So, uh, sort of a um, power mace uh, like effect for rush minions on this card. I think Warrior's uh, just you, excited yeah. to have a two-mana weapon again. Yeah, like, this could have no text on it, and, like, you're running this in Pirate Warrior. I was going to say, like, yeah, I could, I could see this being put in Pirate Warrior. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, for the, just, I, for this, just for the baseline. Even outside the, yeah. like, archetype you would expect it, and it's going to see play. Uh -huh. Like, any two any two mana weapons, like, going to be reasonable in Warrior, especially with a stat line like yeah. this. And any so, uh, rush upside, any mm -hmm. any rush buffs are just the strict upside. So. Oh yeah, exactly that too. Like just just more bonuses from it. So hopefully we'll see this card around for sure. Actually playable. Uh, next we've got Rabid Worgen. Uh, three three rush for three. Kind of basic. Um, I don't think you would really ever want this card over Corcron. I think you'd. I think you'd. I think you'd more relate this card to Bash. Mm -hmm. This card's kind of like yeah. Bash, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably you know, still Alex not good enough to see playable, though. Right? If you're playing like a mid range type of warrior, you, I mean, Alex Strauss' champion is just a better type of thing. Mm -hmm. One mana less, bit of a condition, but it has charge as opposed to rush. Yeah, for sure. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I think this card is just outclassed in almost every situation. So uh, I don't think we'll be seeing this one around wild, at least. Next, we've got a pretty interesting one. Red Band Wasp. It is a 1-3 with Rush for 2 mana and has uh, plus 3 attack while damaged. That's pretty nuts, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's combo comboing this with, with a whirlwind effect. You can yeah. get some serious board control with this. It'll likely uh, be a 4-2 rusher a lot of the time against uh, decks, which I don't know if that'll be good enough of an effect for Wild. I think this will see play in some sort of rush deck in standard, but yeah. it, it's, it'll, pretty, it's yet to be seen whether this card will be playable in wild or not. Could deal with a totem golem with a whirlwind effect. Mm, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that. If you're playing it. against a paladin, right? You play this card, you bump it in, and into one of your the silver hand recruits, and then it, it's essentially you're playing a two mana four two. Is that good enough against like paladin? Probably not if they're playing like a mini bot or a juggler. Yeah, no. it's just so easy to remove after you kill one of their small things with it. Yeah. I'm, th I'm thinking it is more of a card you play on turn three or four. Yeah. As for board control as opposed to on turn two. But most of the time you want to curve out, right? Against yeah, a yeah. deck that's playing something like that, you want to be able to play this on turn two and have it be impactful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's a big downside there. Yeah. So it can be rough in some spots for sure. This is not really doing what you want it to do. Let's see. Yeah. Next, we have uh, Militia Commander. Uh, four mana, two five with Rush. Battle Cry, gain three attack this turn. So it comes seems... down as a five five with Rush for four. That seems pretty good. Yeah, it's a very solid uh, stat line for its turn anyway. Although going to a two f like two power after that seems seems a little rough. But I mean, mm -hmm. charge minions are generally most of the time only useful in the turn you're charging them in anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very so, good I mean, consider like power. an upside, right? Consider the two uh, attack minion just something that's summoned after. 
Mm. Imagine this was like a cork run that you have to kill something with, and then you summon a two-two. Yeah. After. I guess if you think about it like that, it's not too terrible. You could get some okay value out of this card in wild, though. I don't think we're gonna see it a lot. No. Unless there is an actual committed rush deck for wild. Yeah. I think that like mid warrior, there's gonna be more of a dragon based warrior deck. Like, we got some tools for that in this expansion, so, mm. like, any mid-range warrior deck is most likely going to be, like, Menagerie-style deck. Yeah, like some sort of tempo Menagerie list. Mm -hmm. uh, next we have Fester Root Hulk. Uh, five mana, two seven. After a friendly minion attacks, game plus one attack. Uh, cool effect, but... Mm -hmm. There is still, like, how's that effect, and they're not played... Yeah, I think that the effect itself is just not powerful enough. I like the card, but it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't do enough I, for anybody. Yeah, I, I think we've ever seen a card where when a friendly minion attacks, the game plus one attack. But even then, it's assuming you have a lot of stuff on the board to get any value out of it. Mm -hmm. It just and seems a little bit yeah. too underwhelming. Yeah, it's very situational. So next we have a very good card in my opinion. Uh, Town Crier, one mana for a one two. Battle cry, draw a rush minion from your deck. In, in the past, we've seen one mana one twos be very good. Mm -hmm. You've got Undertaker, Secret Keeper. Um, a I lot of the well, a lot of the one drops yeah. we've seen be very good are like the ones that kind of pump themselves up, or yeah, yeah. just been like overly aggressive, like Leper Gnome and Abusive yeah. Sergeant. I think this yeah. one's good just because tutor effects are always very powerful, yeah. and I don't draw feel like this card is very good on one mana as well. Mm -hmm. anything that just gives you a free card is going to be uh, worth a second look and this card in particular does a lot yeah. that you want it to I feel like in the right deck I just really like the two health just mm -hmm. against the shamans and paladins so just, mm -hmm. I, I'm really happy with the stat line yeah for sure that always yeah. helps too mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully yeah, hopefully we'll see this card uh, next we have a card that's very interesting uh, deadly arsenal 6 mana reveal a weapon from your deck deal its attack to all minions Double Gorehal control roll mm -hmm. That's a, yeah. The Gorehal is the only weapon I want <laughs> to reveal with this ever, ever in yeah, my yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. That being said, if you reveal a Gorehal, this card is nuts. Honestly, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like seven. You get you get a seven mana board wipe for six mana and warrior. Like That's that ridiculous. is insane. How many weapons do you need to run? Like you, you, you would have to run three. two Gorehals probably. Yeah, I mean, like, is this double death fight, death fight, double gore howl? Like, is that good enough? I think you would just want double gore howl. Well, I mean, you, yeah, I don't think you can run a warrior deck where you're not running, uh, taking advantage of your weapons, right? It's it's tough to run a control warrior list that's not running a death fight. Mm, I mean, it could be, but if this card's good enough, like, if Deadly Arsenal is good enough on a gore howl, I think it's worth only running the gore howls. Because this is a very powerful effect for Warrior. When has Warrior won. when has Warrior had a non brawl huge board wipe? Yeah, it hasn't. Yeah. Exactly. So Just like think about it. Yeah, brawls and I mean, this together could be enough. Yeah, it's true. You got Warpath, which is clearing boards. You got Brawls, which is clearing boards. You got Deadly mm -hmm. Arsenal, which is clearing boards. Sleep with the fishes. Sleep with the fishes. Like you've got so many board clears now. And then turn seven comes around, um, you start smacking down the big boys, and all just mm -hmm. going into fatigue. Like, I think this card's insane. Yeah, I think this card's going to be really good uh, with, with double gore howl lists. For sure. I, I don't even feel it's that bad if you get, like, a four attack on it, right? Like, this is similar to Dragon's Fury. I'm perfectly comfortable running double Death Spite and double, and maybe even a single gore howl with this. Uh, I think to like that. actually get. Mm, I don't like at four damage. It's not good enough for six mana. I don't think. Because when, when is your opponent five. Have a big enough board, then the only time I'm really concerned about the specifics is like if I'm playing against Paladin, this destroys them. If I'm playing against like a well, okay. Deck, if you're playing against Paladin, if you're playing against Paladin, you're just gonna want your like normal Anything. AOE package anyway. Yeah, like your uh, whirlwinds and stuff. Like, that shouldn't be a problem. Like, you would want this against the decks that normally just, like, make such a wide and big board that you can't deal with it. Uh, and hitting four is not good enough in those matchups. 
But if seven, like the yes, yeah. seven's very good in comparison to seven four. hits the Malganis. That's the big one. That's the one that I'm thinking. I'm thinking about the Q block matchup where it's like seven is good enough at that point. Yeah. Yeah, like mm. I don't feel like four is good enough in the Q block matchup a lot of the times. Like, at that point, you're almost just killing their um, enablers. Mm-hmm. You're like you're not you're killing Doom Guards on seven too. Um, I just feel like double gore how need like you need double gore how to make this card extremely good, but I think it has potential to be insane. Uh, next we've got Darius Crowley, uh, Warrior Legendary. Uh, rush for a uh, with a sorry five mana four four with rush after this attacks and kills a minion gain plus two plus two. Boogie monster reprinted. Yeah. Boogie monster. Yeah, yeah, I don't think this guy's gonna do a lot for us in wild. Nope. Yeah. Mm. nope. yeah, he's too tempo-y and mediocre and just not what we want out of a warrior legendary at this point in our lives. Yeah. So uh, that brings us to the next warrior legendary. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. Something we could all use. Uh, a gore, or sorry, a black cow gunspire. Uh, seven mana for a three-eight minion cannot attack. Whenever it takes damage, three damage to a random enemy. I this just card love the art. The house enables is firing cannons everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the art's very good on this card. Uh, it's a building, not a mech, by the way. Don't forget that. Um, also, <laughs> Trollden card. Yeah, Trollden highlights like, coming. You'll you'll see you'll see a bouncing blade combo with this within <laughs> the first week on Trollden. Yeah, they they, I they said the person who goes and plays that deck first to get on Trollden. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they were like, "Hey, Trollden, can you design a card for us?" And he was like, "Sure." Um, this card with bouncing blade on empty board intrigues me. Twenty-four damage. Mm-hmm. Um, Even with the echo card, this could be potentially good. Okay, okay. So we get a black owl gunspire, a sudden genesis, and a bouncing blade in our hand, right? We get a <laughs> we we get a Thorussian. Trigger Thorussian. <laughs> Start to a joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we walk into a bar. Uh, play Black Owl Gunspire. Uh, now, how would you damage it before you sudden Genesis? It's all messed up. I give up. Uh, Warrior's too hard to play already. Uh, no, I think this card will be interesting, but I don't think it'll make wild play, honestly. I don't think the Bouncing Blade combo is good enough for wild late games think everybody else is just doing more powerful things so most likely we won't see this card in any sort of serious context for uh wild as far as that goes but uh alrighty uh this is the end of our uh first half of our card review this is all the class cards um we're gonna go ahead and cut it off here and uh we will have the neutral cards coming to you soon so uh thanks for watching uh check out the second half